Ah, uh, good evening. Good evening. Yes, we're alive. We're here. We still exist. Uh, welcome to American Embers TV, part of the American Embers Network. Uh, welcome to uh, what I guess uh, is a Sunday night West Ham weekend review. I'm sorry we haven't been doing shows lately. It's my fault. We've had family birthday parties and anniversaries and little minor emergencies. Everybody's fine, but little minor emergencies that have come up that we've had to uh, we've had to deal with. So I have I have just not been around <clears> to do this. Um, Anyway, happy to be able to do it tonight, and we'll try to be more more on schedule after this. Uh, before I talk about anything else, before I talk about anything else, I've got to tell y'all, Friday, this Friday, um, so that's going to be October 22nd. Thank you for giving me a date. Friday, October 22nd. 22nd October, right? Okay. 12.30 p.m. Uh, on the East Coast. That is 9.30 in the morning in uh, California. That is, uh, what is that? Tom, 5 30 in the afternoon. In 5 30 in the afternoon. Yeah, 5 30 yeah, yeah. afternoon. We are scheduled to have <clears throat> the man who was Mr. West Ham before Mark Noble was born, Bill Gardner. Holy Bill shit. Gardner. Bill Gardner will be on the airwaves of American Amherst TV talking about his book, The Man, the Myth, the Legend. And I'm going to tell you something right now. You have to read this book. Guys, wow. believe me. Believe me. Okay. Believe me when I say you have to read this book. I've enjoyed a lot of hooligan books over the years. All right. I, I love all the stories. No, I'm serious. I, the culture, I, I'm, I, I myself am not a violent person at all. I would not do well in that, that situation, but I love the stories. I love the culture. It's like, I have the same. You're, fascination. you're kidding. What do you mean? I'm I was going to say, no, but you, to be fair, Lee, you, do look <laughs> like a man that, yeah. you do look like a man that just would lose his shit occasionally. It's, it's, it's the same. Oh, this is, this is superb. Wow. This is tremendous. <laughs> I mean, he, hey, he's got a point. He's got a fucking point. He does have a point, and they're from Texas too. So anyway, I gotta appreciate. Well, I mean, he's. I mean, he is like a fake Che Guevara uh, profile picture. That's so. true. That's true. Which is, which, frankly, is never a good choice. But anyway. yeah, actually, so uh, Lucas, I don't know. So at Arena Stage uh, in DC, they're having a play about uh, Fidel and uh, Cecilia, his wife, <laughs> in the 1980s when they were there was like 5,000 Cubans who decided to. Uh, who decided to flee to a um, which, to an embassy in, in downtown Havana, trying to get out of Havana, and get out of Cuba? And so the whole play is about does um, does uh, Castro pl- pull out the iron fist like he should, or does he a, a very like compassionate yes. person? I, I have tickets to this, and I'm I'm really curious. I, I did a study abroad in Cuba. <laughs> okay. What about this? Well, this is good. Zach. It is so good to have you back. It's been too long. It yeah, has no, been no, too no. long. I'm, I'm like, it's been too long, my friend. I, do, I, 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 I miss coming on. I miss I miss having a radio show with y'all. And literally, it's just like I have. So like literally, so like I've been talking to a bunch of different people. So by the way, David Gold is right. What's I'm, that? David Gold is right. About oh okay all, all right, right. We'll, we'll get to that we'll get to that later. You know, we'll yeah, later. And David Gold's right about women, just like they are some of the nicest people you'll ever meet in your life. And yes, they're so incredibly like talking like you can just talk to them about anything and they'll talk to you. But anyways, but on a more serious note, it's just kind of like I don't, we were not taught about this when we were in fucking Cuba. We were downtown fucking Havana. We were by the fucking embassy. We were literally two blocks from the embassy having lunch. And what we were having there. We're fucking like cute, the coldest Cuban sandwiches you could ever fucking have. By the way, what's the, what's the Cuban sandwiches? Meat. And what you, what you should never have cold? Meat. By the way, I've been battling a virus for the past month, past week. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. I go I, I'm glad. We're, I love Cuban sandwiches, by the way. I'm glad we're yeah, the, the, I like great when they're, they're great when they're good. But when they're yeah. terrible, you just want to throw up. I believe that. I believe that. All right, so <clears throat> let me just go back for a second. I want to make sure everybody heard this. I want to make sure everybody heard this. Because I, because I got, I got, I got lost in Fidel Castro. Though, I'm right? very <laughs> excited about. I'm very excited about this, and I'm not going to lie to you. A little we bit intimidated. Uh, I just saw Ken show up. Ken's going to want to hear this too. Friday afternoon. Friday afternoon. Twelve thirty, live. Twelve thirty Eastern time. Nine thirty on the on the West Coast. Everything in between. Five thirty in London. All right. Probably in Australia, it's going to happen on like uh, Thursday morning or something. I don't know. Anyway, Bill Gardner, the legend, the 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 man who again was Mr. West Ham before Mark Noble was even born, 
Bill Gardner will be on our airwaves. At least that's the plan. That's the plan. We've got it scheduled. So be on here for Bill Gardner. And seriously, seriously, read this guy's book. Spend the six bucks on the Kindle. All right. <laughs> this is a, this. No, I'm serious. This is, and I don't, I don't profit from this in any way, obviously, right? But I'm just telling you, this is an amazing book. Uh, hooligan stories are fun. Okay. And he tells some of those. But this is about the man's life, and it is shocking. It, it is, it is dark. It is super dark. All right. What he survived, a lot of people would not have survived. So, anyway, Bill Gardner, uh, and we'll we'll talk. We'll have more about this on social media. They got like pictures. That. It has a few pictures. It has a few yeah, pictures. You can, you can I'm get in. it, Lucas. I'm in. It, it has a few pages. Well, you know, you get the Kindle. I mean, I read everything on the Kindle because my eyes don't do well reading actual paper. So, I read everything on the phone, basically. Really? Yeah, yeah. I've always been. It's weird, but it's true. Okay, but this sure. has been like the greatest invention ever for me to actually read stuff. Okay, actually. So I age, I'm pretty sure you're on my, my parents' age. I'm 47, so... Okay, well... okay, so you, but, but, this, but, but, but you know what? I've, it's, I've been this way. The, the Digital reading has like made me literate, basically, because I okay, always... So, I couldn't read more than 10 minutes before my, I had my eyes would get fatigued. So, okay, anyway. So, but, but, so, like, my parents were about 10 years older than you. Like, literally any time we had a paper or something like that, we just had to, like... My parents were like, print it out. My mother was like, with the highlighter, she was like highlighting things and like marking. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. See, no, I, I, yeah, I, I got I to have it on the screen. I'm so much better on yeah, screen. So it got, it got to the point where I'm just kind of like, Mom, can I pull out a typewriter for you? <laughs> we, own it, we own typewriters. We own typewriters. I learned, to, I learned to type on a typewriter. I learned to type on a typewriter. Yeah, All right. Yeah, anyway, yeah. anyway, 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 let's, let's, yeah, anyway, sure. I'm trying not to go for two hours tonight. Okay. If we can help it. So Sorry, uh, I mean, anyway, Bill Gardner, and I'm not going to say anything. You guys know about the merchandise and all that. AHTV. Fire immersed, damn it. Out. It pays for everything. It helps us out. It helps us out a lot. AHTV.threadless.com, all that stuff. And yes, actually, we're, we're, to be quite honest, I need new stickers. My, the sticker on my car is pulling off. Well, there you go. We're still, I am. I have not yet gone through everybody who wants to be on the show and contact. We'll get to it, all right? I'm sorry. We've been really, I've been personally very distracted lately, so we're trying to get back on track. Anyway, uh, right next to me on the screen. From uh, Maryland, uh, repping his hometown Pittsburgh Steelers, who are going to play in about 20 minutes. So he's probably going to be signing <laughs> off. I'm going to uh, give you Lucas. my best Jesse Lingard substitution effort. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, thank you. That's a little knife in the salt. Sorry, we can just we can bully him as the night goes on. That's, yeah, that's... yeah, exactly. It's Lucas. How are you, Lucas? <laughs> I'm fantastic. We'll have a really good night if Steelers can pull through. It's Nowadays, very rare to have a West Ham Steelers double win Man, night really day. I, I I like him over Seattle. I think Seattle's in a lot of trouble. Uh, we almost yeah. had we almost had a West Ham uh, Patriots. Uh, oh, weekend, oh, but, I'm so pissed. but they lost to yeah. Unfortunately, they lost in overtime to Dallas, which I really hate for a lot of reasons. But uh, all right, so right below me on the screen, <laughs> America's team, uh, baby, <laughs> from from Leeds, from Leeds, in the heart of the Midlands. Yeah. It, in the UK, it's uh, Tom Atherton. How, How you doing about Tom? them Cowboys? Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Good evening. Hello. You sound yes. just like Jerry Jones. You do. <laughs> you did. I hate that. Don't do that. <laughs> yes, no, I'm not, I'm not too bad. Thank you. Not too bad. Recently moved in, hence the different background. A very colourful background as well. So. That's beautiful. Um, Pikachu! Yes. Pikachu. Coupled with the Teva show, which is now all framed as well. So, all yes. your heroes are in the background. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, listen, all the heroes there in the background. Yeah, is, that Pele, is that Pele with um, Bobby Moore? It is indeed, yes. And then yes! Matt Noble's testimonial yes. thing up there as well. There's many Fantastic. different things. And then there's a the little, little NBA section down there and stuff like that. So, oh, yeah, nice. Lot, Wait, who's your NBA team? Coming. Who's your NBA team, Tom? I don't really have an NBA team. I just I just love watching basketball. I used to play basketball yeah. as a kid. So my dad was into American sports when I was younger, and he kind of grew me up on watching them. Oh, Although he was like a – he was a – Dolphins and Dan Marino fan back in the day. That was his team. So, oh, that's uh, kind of unfortunate because they were good, never quite good enough. Yeah, yeah. Ken, Ken is a Jets fan, so uh, he's he's a, a, a New Jersey guy for many years. I know. So, um, anyway, uh, next to uh, Tom, and he's already introduced himself as he usually does. It's Frank Zappa. No, it's it's Zach. It's <laughs> Zach. Well, to it's not Frank me. Zappa, but it could be Frank Zappa. Well, to be quite honest, I am a dancing fool, so... And I mean that in the nicest way, because I like... No, 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 I, I lot, take so. it in the nicest way, but... Yeah, I figured you would, yeah. Uh, but, Zach, how are you, Zach? You all right? You know what? I, I miss coming on the shows. I really do, I and mean, then it's been... I can't remember the last time that I've been on a show, Um, 
but it's been a very it's been a very long time. It's been before the season began. And oh and, yeah, it's been a quite a while. Yeah. Well, we okay. haven't we. We've not been very good about doing shows. Again, I, it's all my fault. We had just a lot of stuff going on uh, I mean, so that like, I didn't, you know. I mean, so you, I mean, you and me both, like, I've had so much, like, mental health shit going on, and it's just not fun. Yeah. Um, if yeah. anyone's watched Ted Lasso in the last season. Brilliant. Uh, I thought it was fantastic, yes. Yeah, I'm pissed off the with a fucking villain now. Oh, I'm not. No, no, I'm so happy about You know what? You know what? Okay. Please don't tell me the ending. I haven't watched the last two episodes yet. All right. You know what? We can't discuss it. Seriously. Okay, so, <laughs> no, no, we can't. We can't. I might be the only person but, in the world that hasn't watched a episode. You do. You do so need to watch just, it. Let me just, all I'm going to say, all I'm going to say, this really doesn't spoil anything, Tom. You get excited for next season. There's going to be a lot of West Ham. Okay. That's all I was going to say. I see that, that, that I know that they've got a lot of the licensing as well. Yeah. For so, next season. Yeah. That no, was, no. It's, 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 it's going to be, it's going to be heavy. So I good. actually it's woke up to that news and I started screaming. My parents were like, I came downstairs screaming because like, so, like I really wanted to watch it. And my parents were like, it's a soccer show. Like, what are we going to like? And then <laughs> like, and then all of a sudden, like first episode of week, they could not stop laughing. Like, okay, episode two, let's do it. And I'm like, really? <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's right. Zach. There's Zach. There he is. There's Zach. I can't yeah, tell I mean, wait, 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 wait. I need a Which one is which? Which one is which? I don't know. It's hard to tell. Dude, See, I, can't, I can't cool. tell. Oh, which one? Who, who's who? Unfortunately, we lost Frank Zappa like 25 years ago. But anyway, yeah, well, so, um, I see. I wait. I have to. I have to. Hang on. I see. I see uh, down here on the, uh, the the bottom corner of the screen, my good friend. We haven't seen him in way too long. It's Selly. How are you, Selly? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, good to see everybody. I see I'm in very uh, esteemed company here. So oh, know, it's always, always nice. <laughs> yes, um, always, always. <laughs> uh, no, it's been good. I apologize for my absence. Just been busy with school and work and this yeah. other nonsense. It, it, one of my new bosses uh, sometimes has work meetings on a Sunday. What? Um, oh, no. No, which no, no, is no. interesting on two parts. One, because it's a Sunday. Right. And two, because right. she's from Texas and puts it in the middle of football. So, you know, shout Jeez. out to that. Sorry, but... what? what is wrong How with dare her? Um, what How dare is she? Wrong with her? Lee, Lee has his own opinion. Let's Lee let 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 Lee go. Blur. Is she one of those? Is she one of those Texans who hates football because it's so big down there? Is that is she one of those people? No, I don't. I don't think that's it. Um, I mean, she's to be fair to her, she is very. You know, she's, she's oh my good god! People. <laughs> the ghost of Tim has appeared. Who let him in here? Who let him in? Oh, I was telling no, you. No, she, she's good people. I can't. I'm just. That's like the only thing I can really talk shit about. I, but no, been silly. been good. Years ago, years ago, my wife and I went to this church in Waltham, and I met this woman who went to TCU. And very, very few people who went to TCU live in this part of the country. All right, I'm talking. <laughs> the ghost has disappeared. Like Ten or fifteen, and he's gone. <laughs> And I said to her, are you a TCU football fan? And she says, no. She says, football takes away too many resources from the dance department. What the? And I was like, well, nice knowing you. <laughs> I was pretty much the end of that, you know. So, <laughs> like, uh, you know. I, Don't so, get me uh, wrong. I mean, but no, I can't. I can't handle that. I, so, um, so, so hang on. So quick story. I went to Hofstra University. Uh, yes. On the You're Flying Dutchman. Yes. Yes. Well, we're now the, we're now the pride because it's a bunch of lions. Oh, I get it. And also, oh, it's, uh, it's over sixty-five percent of the uh, student population is gay. Well, is in the LGBT plus. Q At Hofstra? Yeah, it is. Okay, I didn't know that. It okay, is, and neither did I. And I went there until later. But anyways, <laughs> um, but anyway, so we cut our football program in two thousand nine, and the whole reason we cut our football program uh, was because it was costing twenty million dollars, and that was an, as an FCS school, not an FBS mm -hmm. school, FCS school. Mm -hmm. Um, and but we cut a program to get in to get a um, medical school, and the medical school uh, dr dr uh, drives right into Northwell Health. Yeah, you know what? That's just a bad decision. Uh, to be honest, medical school. Who needs a medical school? I mean, come on. TCU's football team is mediocre this year. We're not very oh, good. No, but, I mean, hang on. If you like, I mean, but I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have gone to a school without a without a a Division One A football team. Twenty minutes in, and we're yet to talk about the proper. All right, all right, all right, all right. This is a typical yeah, league yeah, show. Yeah, this, yeah, uh... <laughs> and, and I'm not. We're not doing three hours. Yet. Right, yeah. Hurry, Zach. Hurry. You know, you got like two more minutes. TCU's most football graduate. Sammy fucking Baugh, the greatest gunslinger ever to play in the football. Absolutely, Sammy Baugh, absolutely. He, I have his fucking Redskins jersey, and I'm proud of it. We retired his number when I was in college, but he didn't come to the game. He wouldn't come to the game. He stayed on his farm in West Texas. He wouldn't leave his farm. <laughs> um, it sounds like Sammy fucking Baugh. 
absolute legend, and that's a very typical Sammy Baugh thing. A total legend. Uh, no question. I, lo- I love the man. I love the man. I, j- I wish I would have met him before he died. Oh, he's brilliant. It was brilliant. Me too. I, I, I do too. Uh, all right. So we had a fantastic result today. Yes, we did. Uh, let's let's talk about what we liked about about today. Now, since the last time we were, here, I don't remember the last time we were here, but we've had we've had the loss to Brentford, which was gutting, obviously. Um, and then we had the stupid international break, which is useless. And then uh, obviously we came back today, fantastic bounce back, wonderful defensive performance. Uh, Ogbonna with the deceptively good goal. I know a set piece goal, people don't think of, but you know what? That was a tough goal to score. A tough goal to score, I think. Uh, all right, why don't we start with not Zach? Why don't we start with Lucas? Sorry. You, you tell us what you thought about the game today. Give us your your high points, your 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 best players, your best moments, whatever. Um, you know, coming into the game with no DCL or Richarlson, I already knew it was going to be another one of those games. We're going to dominate possession, and we're still yeah. going to somehow barely get our way through because that's the West Ham way. We play better with no possession rather with possession. Um, I think we, I don't, I think we deserve the three points just based off how attacking we were. And yes, you know, I don't possession. I actually saw somebody on Twitter saying we parked the bus. You don't park the bus with 62% possession. That's and I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a match in my, entire history of watching West Ham where I literally every shot attempt today was blocked. Every single one. Yes, yes, yes. No one Sorry, got a I, clean can, shot off. Yes. Can I just interject? I know I said let's talk about football, but Zach, are you a drug dealer? What is going on with the size of your lounge and the shoe collection? I've been distracted. I know I said I wouldn't do that. <laughs> okay, so hang on. So you want, like, hey, you want the full Monty? You're you want, putting the whole thing in danger. Dude, what do you do for a living? Like, uh, so 9-11, so 9-11 happened and my father invested in airplane stocks the day of, or well, the day after pretty much when the stock market going to open up again. Good Lord. Did he really? Yeah. So that, that's a story. Well, okay. So, uh, <laughs> that's, I guess kinda, somebody had to. that's actually kind of smart. Uh, that's yeah, that's very, very smart, smart, but I got to say, it's not what I was thinking on the, on the day after 9-11. Uh, He's just so panning that, around. It's just, there's just like a 60 inch TV on the wall and every well, so Jordan yeah, sneaker so collection. Wow, that is pretty nice. That's uh, Jesus Christ. My little office here the is looking size of the TV is uh, about half yeah. the size of every flat in London. Uh, but you know, <laughs> uh, so know. Hang, on, hang on, do you all know who Peter Max is? Paint the artist. Yes, yes. So that's an, hang on. I'm moving towards it. This okay. is an original Peter Max. This is AHTV Cribs. Uh, <laughs> That's fantastic. I liked my flat, and I liked my new flat until Zach came on the show. How so, Tom, but, but this is a like like legitimate uh, Peter Max. You got a roommate in the flat, Tom? <laughs> Maybe. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, you, ever, you guys getting along? The two of you getting along? Oh yeah, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, yeah. a lot of yeah. lot of lads, a lot of glad stuff like Carlsberg. A lot lot of banter going on there. Beef jerky, yeah, a lot of beef. I annoyingly I love Carlsberg, but that's very American of me. Annoyingly, won't leave me alone. Is what I would say. <laughs> so, beef, quite a lot of like, next like a lot of farts and uh, fart jokes. So, anyway, so <laughs> this is another Peter like. Max. I know what it's like. Uh, this is another Peter Max. This is the Peter Max on the back of a canvas. <laughs> you do live in a Peter really, Max everywhere. That is a very large. Yeah, and then so hang on. Then here's another Peter Max. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lee. Well, I said, you know so, what? I've kind yeah, of enjoyed it. I'm laid off. I am just let it go. Used to be Andy Warhol. Jesus not a, is that an original? Yeah, it is. You oh get my out god! Of here. Get out of here! Are you serious? Yeah, I wish I was fucking joking. Oh, well, that is impressive. Well, then, so this is not a Peter Max. <laughs> Oh no, that he's is, into that is gone. impressive. <laughs> uh, uh, they did a study on artists. They a whole thing on artists. I just and, love the fact you carry the mic around like it's like a descriptive tour no, of no, it's, artist it's, museum. It's, this is, you know well, what? So he did a whole this thing about so artists, today, and so like the whole thing was like artists, and so he picked Peter Max because we have whole like house of Peter Max. Yeah. So he, <laughs> oh my god, don't drop Peter Max. <laughs> this, which looks like a Peter Max. And so Peter Max came to um, the D.C. area. And so he came to the D.C. area. He signed, signed photos, shook hands, kissed babies, yada, 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 did photos. Sh- photos uh. Anyways, so he signed the back of it. I can't tell if you can see it. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> he never signs anything that's not his own. <laughs> well, okay. So uh, who was it? Uh, Vernon here mentioned the. Uh, okay, I'm gonna show. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Okay, I want to do this, and then we're gonna segue back to what Lucas was saying about block shots because I, I like that. Well, so hang on, really, hang on, just really. Here quick. is the cotton. Here is the Peter Max uh, Continental Airliner, and I will say it's. Uh, well, so hang on. I mean, hang on. He also did the. He also did a Dale Earnhardt Senior car in the. Uh, I believe 1997 NHL All Star Game program when they were in Boston. Oh, that was ninety six. I think it was ninety. Pretty sure it was ninety six. But yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, and here's another one, and then here's the biggest Peter Max we have. In my in the house. Okay, that's fantastic. I love it. I mean, I mean like like the like the Peter Max was the worrying thing here. Peter Not Max, the strange is looking man in the corner. Also, a fantastic name, a great name. Uh, David Sullivan should like somebody named Peter Max. Um, yeah. oh, wait a minute. Wait. A minute. That's sounds, a like a, sounds, sounds like a dude who sounds like a dude who's worked for him in the past. Uh, all right. All right. Yeah, all right. Wait a I, I appreciate this immensely, but I, I, I'm trying not to go for, for like three hours tonight. So yeah, sorry. I'm just, so that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. In any moment, we, I knew I knew what I was getting myself into. Okay, when when, you, you. when you signed on, I, Zach, we love having you. This is it's, it keeps it keeps it fresh. It keeps it fresh. Uh, all right, but Lucas, I'm with you. Zuma and Ogbonna today, absolute brick wall. I thought they were both fantastic. I, you know, and everyone was saying Ben Johnson was really good today. I might be in the, the minority that I didn't think he was don't you do it. all that no, today. No, don't you do it. <laughs> I'm not, a, not I, saying he played bad, but, like, I'm well, not, I'm, I'm not listen, seeing an 8 out of 10 performance. He's stepping in for – I blame Tom for everything. He's stepping in for, uh, to be honest, one of What's our What's I better... do wrong? <laughs> <laughs> you know what you did. <laughs> Uh, he's stepping in for one of our better players in, in Sioux Fall, who, you know, is a, always an impact player. Uh, I thought I Ben agree. Johnson, I, I said on Twitter that he stepped in capably, like he was fine. I, I'm not sure he was spectacular, but good and clearly. Yeah. Good and there's, him. there's not a problem with that. You can put be it, a, yeah. you can be put a it, system it. guy and fill, fill the role. But I, there was about three or four times and situations where I about did my head in. Personally. Put it this put put it this way though. They early on in the game they switched they switched Damari Gray and Calvert Lewis uh, not Calvert Lewis. So they switched Townsend and Gray. They swapped them both sides because Gray was having no luck against Cresswell. And for a guy that's been in form in Gray from pretty much since the start of the season, arguably with Townsend have been the two best players. I thought Johnson kept him quiet for ninety minutes. I honestly, I'm again everybody has their own opinion. I'm not disagreeing with your opinion. Per se, I'm just you I'm giving my. With me. I know I'm not agreeing with you. I'm giving my opinion on it. But, but I don't think it was first. I thought I thought, start, I thought he was. I, I thought he was good. The fact that he kept one of the most informed players quite currently in the Premier League is is a pretty good job if, for a if young. We're going off the right scale. Right. I'd give right. him a seven out of ten, which is good. Eight, but, yeah, if, that's if, fine. but if yeah. but you you can't compare him to Sue Fowl is what I would say. I'm like not. if if you're expecting no 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 no. But I'm saying like if people were expecting right. him to come and be Sue Fowl today. It's never going to happen. But no, he, what he did he do, does have to step into that role. Was all, exactly. But what he, few... when he did do, he did it. He did it very comfortably and well. And you know, clean sheet on top of it. And you keep Gray quiet for ninety minutes. Is for me. I thought it was a very. If good I, if I could go seven and a half, I would. Awesome. A very but, mature performance. If you yeah. could, but you can't. But you can't. Yeah. He had it. He had, It was a. It was a solid game. There yeah, was a few. There was a few times during the game I did not like his decision making. Like. He almost gave away a goal in our half. He could have played a simple outlet pass to Bowen, but he played it to the middle of the park, turned it over, mm. could have been a goal. They got a mm. shot on. And the time he went down the flank and he decided to just put it into a sea of blue instead of right to the top of the box where there was <laughs> someone freely going to. That, that's my only complaint. But like I said, if I could give a seven and a half, I would. But I'm going seven. He had a good a good. I think, I think the good thing for us is, though, that Obviously, because he's had that exposure now, not just in the Prem, but also in the Europa League as well. It I want is him nice back. to know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I, want I just think back. it's nice to know. I feel more comfortable with Johnson at right back now than if Fredericks was fit and could have played in that game. No That's question. how I, I feel. I I, yes, Frederick has the extra pace, but I think that Johnson offers both going forward and he has somewhat of a defensive brain on him where Fredericks just does not. So I, I'm I'm glad that he's got minutes under his belt where he can come in and 
do a good enough job against, yes, a poor Everton side, maybe not the best Everton side, maybe a different if uh, Richarlison was down there. But for the fact, like I said, he could come in, keep a clean sheet and keep some of their better players quiet for 90 minutes, I think is probably the uh, the best result we could have hoped for today. If DCL or Richarlison play today, the one of them I think we draw. Personally. Oh, no, I thought we lost today if either of them played. I was very worried about this game until I uh, heard that they were out. I don't, haven't, I don't really follow Everton, obviously. Once I, I heard on Friday, but I didn't yeah. want to, like, marinate into that. <laughs> Sally, right. Sally, give us your thoughts. You, Sally hasn't gotten a word in edgewise. Uh, give us your thoughts on the game today, Sally. Ben Johnson, anything you want? Yeah, I mean, I feel like Ben Johnson came in and did the job he was asked to do. I mean, you know, it wasn't, yes, I do too. wasn't spectacular, but he right. by no means was the reason that we could have lost the game. Um, yep. uh, somebody had put on Twitter, uh, like, who was man of the match. And I think, you know, you could easily make a case for Declan Rice, uh, Agbana, and um, – and Zuma, I feel like whenever there were, especially in the second yeah. half, whenever there were situations to where Everton was getting close to scoring, I think, you know, one of them was either snuffing a pass out, blocking a shot, intercepting a pass, you know, yeah. something like that. So I think those guys all had a great day. Um, it was good to see the team come out of the gates as uh, as on point as they were, you know, especially after, I wouldn't necessarily say a week off, but just a week not together. Um, with the international break, which to me felt a lot longer than the two week one, a couple like last oh, month. Yeah. Um, so it was nice to come and see that. You know, I think it, I think that alone is kind of a sign of the times uh, with Moyes in the sense of, you know, without two of their best players in, you know, we kind of sniffed blood in the water and we were on top of it for, you yes. know, a good majority of the first half and, you know, bits and pieces of the second half, um, where, you know, in the past, you know, Everton might have still dictated things since they were the home side and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I think we're unfortunate. I think the one thing we need to really get uh, worked out is is finishing, you know, not just by any one particular player, but by everyone. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. – and not to say that he had a bad game because I don't think that he did, but um, I think Ben Rama showed some situations to where he could have been a little bit more patient. Seeked out sort of, a pass. Sort of I thought silly. I thought Fornals was the, the same way. Yeah, yeah instead of going yeah. The, for the spectacular. But he wasn't the only yep. one today that did that. Um, but overall, yeah, I think, you know, it was a good performance. It's good to come back and off of the, the losing – I'm sorry, to get over the Brentford loss. Right. Um, uh, and it's nice to see that we have such good away form. You know, it's good momentum going into Thursday. So hopefully we It's huge up. to pick up three points away every time we pick up three points away. And, and the only yeah. concern I have now is why aren't we winning at home? Yeah. Uh, well, we, we're not, we haven't been winning at home all season. And, and frankly, you know, I, everybody knows how the last couple of home games have gone. You know, we had the uh, really gutting loss against Manchester United. We know the circumstances. Same thing again happens against Brentford. So we're close to picking up points at home. We're really yeah. close, but we're not doing it. And somehow when we go away, they're playing the 90 plus minutes. They're putting in the full effort. They're not allowing, you know, the injury time goal at home. Everything's falling apart right at the end. And I don't know if that's opposition home versus away form. I don't know if there's a reason for that. Maybe it's just coincidence, but I don't like the fact that we're not winning at home. If you want to be, if you want to qualify for Europe again, Three points away is fantastic, but you got to pick up the three at home as well, and we haven't yeah. been doing that. Uh, I, I did, mean, however, fair, we we have been the exception on the road. We haven't lost in six months now. On the I, road. It's unbelievable. I, I saw a list of somebody. Somebody put up a list on Twitter of our of our as you said, Tom, our last six months away in, in all competitions. Yeah, and we haven't lost in as long as I can remember. Uh, and we're going to Gank on uh, Thursday, so yeah, Hank. 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 Hank, Hank, yeah, exactly, Hank, Hank in French. That are <laughs> Hank. <laughs> In French, it's like gonk or something like that. I don't even try. They're like, we're not going to pronounce that word. The one French have... word that you can't say, Lee? It, well, no, it's the French word. The only way I can say it is to say it in French because the Dutch word is like gank, you know. The French call it gaunt, I think. So they don't even try. They have no well, Which word going to Ghent? Ghent. Gank. No. Oh, no. Oh, am I getting them mixed up? Maybe I'm getting them mixed no, up. No, 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 no. There's, hang on. There's a whole other team. In there's the there's two different I know, teams. I know, I know. Hey, 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 Ghent, and they're... Uh, their logo. Oh, is, that is that is. is, is oh, I got it mixed up. You're right. The French. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what the French call Gank. They probably never talk about it at all. Well, so, um, so uh, Gent's mask, Gent's logo is a, a is a Native American uh, with the whole Indian headdress, 
and it's a very ma- it's a very Massachusetts thing. And it's like the oh, whole you're right. It's just, it's just like looking back, and he's just kind of like, wait a minute. You they also like to say roof and not roof. You weirdo. <laughs> Where is this at? Kind of like, this, this is that? Boston is people. Roof. Look at the roof. Do it's they? roof. Roof. No, 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 so I've been here I'm not, I'm I'm for many years and I've never really noticed that. So what would they say for Kamal Roof, the underleg striker? <laughs> they roof. wouldn't say anything. Does he play for the Red Sox or the Pats? They wouldn't talk about him at all. <laughs> uh, there you go. There's Okay, there's Ghent. Okay. Yeah, Zach so is right. Next to Ghent. The French word for this is Gaunt. They said, but gank, I have no idea. Gank is yeah, a so that's, thing so that's the logo. And I had to say, it, the logo looks a lot like Indian head motorcycles. It certainly does. Yes, absolutely it does. You're and right so about that. That's why, that's why I actually own a jersey of them. And like, Make I'm sure sure that Dan Snyder doesn't know about that. I I say say that Dan Snyder would not be pleased to know that somebody <laughs> Wait, out there. As, as, if some, as someone in the DMV, that's hilarious. And you, you get a gold star for that. Yeah, no, Dan Snyder would be very unhappy to know that that's wah, happening. Wah, wah, wah. Probably shouldn't tell him about the Kansas City Chiefs either because he might not like that. Red Hawks. They were the yeah, Red uh, Hawks. Just, call him, just call him Washington. Just let it be. No, no, hang on, hang on. I, I'm actually sponsored the Streetham Red Hawks. Do what? I, hang on. I sponsor the Streetham Red Hawks. Oh, you do? Yeah. Wait, what, are you, what, are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> They're a <laughs> division <laughs> hockey team in the UK. In Streetham. Oh. SW13. Hey, for all you who live in London, is that candy corn on your shirt? Yeah. Yes. Hang on. So hang on. It's resembling vampire teeth. Have a delicious <laughs> Halloween. Oh, they're not saggy boobs. No. Okay, it's candy so, corn. So it, it, it's supposed to represent saggy boobs, but I'm like, I paid five dollars for this. I'm happy. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Oh, that's cool. I thrifted it. So anyway, so the uh, Stratum Red Hawks. Yeah. Team. Okay, and I like eight. hockey. Yeah. Um. Uh, but so they have a so that's my business, Zach Strong Show. What? No way. Yeah. That's you? That's me. That's, that's so cool. Sure. Okay, I gotta say, Zach, that's cool. Now, was this a major investment for you to put that on there? No, so it's about it's about a hundred pa- it's about a hundred bucks. Well, I, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna sponsor myself a hockey team in the UK. So, hey, hey, what do you guys think? American Hammers TV sponsoring a hockey team in the UK. Come on now. Okay, and so so the problem is, and most of the people who support hockey, support football, are Palace fans because it's SW13. Oh, I get it, I get it. Yeah, yeah. He is right about this. It, it got is a glove too. I, I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway. But so, but uh, but but on, but like so, the story goes. So I was having a debate with someone when I was at Hofstra about Native American team names, and uh, the Strahan Redskins came up. Okay. Um, okay. So okay. I, all right. All right. All right. It's okay, I got to. I got okay. Right. Zach, Zach, do, do you do you want to talk about the Everton game today? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. So I actually, I actually have a couple points. Oh, please, please, big points. You but, got a couple so, points on your shirt. I can see those. <laughs> yeah, I have more than two points. I see the points. It is so hot in this room. I may have to open a window. Anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> but so, like, we actually, I was surprised at how well we played defensively in the box. Oh, I, I, I listen. I mean, I, to me, Silly was talking about men of the match. Uh, you could have given it to Agbana. You could have given it to Zuma. Uh, obviously, Declan Rice was fantastic. Declan Rice is. all day. So, and which is what everybody said, Tom. Everybody, everybody voted for Declan Rice, and it's a good, it's a good choice, right? That was genuinely fantastic. for me. That was one of his best games yeah. as a controlling the tempo of the game in midfield. He was just. Bananas. He was ridiculous. Do not do this. No, well, I, I, I tell you, what really struck me about this game... Whoa, who's guys, taking you, a picture? I have no idea. Me. You, you guys can tell me. <laughs> what really struck me about this game... Six, I think we had 62% possession. 61. We had, twi- we had twice as many passes as they did. We had... Uh, <laughs> I mean, this is, not, this is not a typical West Ham game in that we dominated possession... We, 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 you know, we boss the game, right? So, and so, hey, so I should have scored more goals. Hey, I have the sets up here. So we left possession 61 to 39. Yes. 15 to 15 goals attempt. Four to two goals uh, shots on goal. Four to nine for them off goal. Uh, right. Eight to four blocks. Uh, three to five free kicks. Nine to seven corners. Two offsides. 
Nine quarters. Of, did you have? Do you have the pass numbers? Because I I had. Uh, so hang on. The first hang. On, you want the first half numbers? No, no, the, no. The, the the number of passes completed. Well, ours was something like. Uh, so hang on. So total. So in the so total, or do you want the half by half? You know what? It doesn't matter. I can find it. Uh, I appreciate it. But I, okay. Here, I'm ac- pulling it ac- up. Accurate passes. Two hundred and thirty-nine for Everton. Four hundred fifty-two. We more than doubled. I mean. It, it just we just dominated this game, yeah, we, and honestly, probably could have scored a couple more goals. But this was this was not a typical West Ham performance. And the reason I bring this up, the reason I bring this up, is because I said to myself after Brentford, uh, when when I saw the starting eleven versus Brentford, it was our strongest starting eleven, and everybody knew what it was going to be. All right, everybody in the world knew what, what our starting eleven was going to be, and I started to say to myself, "Are we too predictable?" I mean, has the magic run out from last season? Does everybody know the starting? Everybody know the game we play? You know, are we too predictable? Is that why we couldn't beat Brentford at home? I don't know. Maybe, but 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 today we make one change because of injury, right? It's Ben Johnson. Everybody else is the same. Everybody else is the same, and it's a totally different game. It's a totally different style of game. Um, did you guys? Uh, do you guys have any thoughts on that? Hey, James. I don't, I don't think we're creative enough. Mean? Tell, okay, keep going, keep going. I just, I mean, I don't know. For the front four that we have, in my opinion, we la- we should show more creativity, in my opinion. Like, I, well, I don't know what it is. Let me we just Like, one. when we have possession, when we have that much possession, we should be, I don't even want to say we, like, dominated because, I mean, we scored. <laughs> if we won 2-0, I'd say we dominated. Well, we dominated possession, but we didn't well, dominate. Yeah. The only thing we didn't dominate was the actual score line. Well, so, I, so. I, I agree with Lucas. Like we, really, we should be a lot mm-hmm. more creative, given given the team that we have and given what we have. I mean, sure, we ha- we're going to like we're, we're going. I mean, in th- on Thursday we have a we have a match on Thursday, dear. But that's a whole other story. Right. But my, and at the same time, it brings us to a whole other question of: Are we going to be? The team are we going to be a team that it's going to be a perennial, um, like a uh, top 32, top 16, top 18, kind of like, um, um, PS, uh, uh, like, uh, like Rosgard Lugratz in Bulgaria, who is constantly in the top spot, like in the top, like 32, top 16 of the Europa League, yeah, yeah, and, and they but but they do, but first off, they win all the the. Bulgarian cups, so that that's regardless. But at the right. same time, but it's just kind of like, oh, we're going to be the team that's going to be like a, a threat in Europe, but not, but and also not really a threat in England, I mean, domestically, but not really win domestically. We're not uh, well, I think it remains to be seen. I mean, I I would I I questioned at the outset of the season whether we could get back into Europe and compete in Europa League. With the yeah. squad, yeah. but I, I, I'm starting to believe a little bit. I mean, a little bit now. I don't know right? about that, Lee. I don't know about that, mate. Keep, keep, keep going, James. Tell, tell us. First of all, welcome, <laughs> I don't know, welcome, James. I don't know, I don't know about that, mate. We've got a good, we've got a good eleven, but our bench is shocking, and that is no joke. Well, yeah. uh, let, me, let me just ask you this, James. Let me. Let me, let me we were just talking about how <clears throat> against Brentford. Everybody knew who our starting eleven would be. Everybody, anybody could have picked it out. I love these people who go on Twitter and they're like, "This is my starting eleven." Like it's everybody's starting eleven. Okay, <laughs> we know, you know what I mean. We already knew that. Yeah. Uh, so I started to wonder: Are we getting too predictable? Is that why we were unable to to beat Brentford? We had you know two out of three games we lost there. One change this week from injury. That's it. And yet we were like a different team, like dominating possession. You know, uh, not necessarily doing the counterattacking thing. So. Uh, are we predictable, James, or do you think we're able to we're, we're able to adapt to the situation? I think what it is, he's got so much trust in the front four that he he hasn't got no other alternative other than if, like, yeah. who'd you put in there? Y- Yarmolenko, who's not good enough. So it's a very tricky one for me. He, I don't want even him to run these players into the ground, but then I don't want us to be putting in players who ain't good enough. So it's a bit of a hit, hit and miss one with us. When you look at our bench, we've got a lot of defensive players when they're all fit. Fredericks, Dawson, Diop, yeah. Ben Johnson, for instance. Um, I'd like to name a few. Noble in there. Yep. Uh, Crow in there. They're all defensive players. Like when, If Antonio's not on it, 
who replaces Antonio? And well, no nobody. Else. That's well, we've known that for a long time. That's yeah. that's what yeah. I mean by predictable. You know, you're getting Antonio up front. He's hard to handle. We all know that. But everybody has game film on this guy, right? To use mm. kind of an NFL expression, you know, everybody knows who this guy is now. You can't throw a a a, a change and and get, take everybody by surprise because honestly, I mean, you know who it's going to be. I think There's what no, it is. You know, I think, to be honest with you, Bowen can still play that role, though. You know. Mm, I don't and know. He can, he's, he can. He's, he's 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 good, but let's be honest. He scored one goal in seventeen games. Is that what we're asking for in the striker? Right. <laughs> well, his, his, yeah. his chance is created. That's harsh. Yeah, but is it is it harsh though, Tom, or is it? Come on, like we want a goal scorer. We don't want to have one seventeen goal. Oh, 17 appearances on one goal because he's been, I would say he's there. been very. I would say he's been very unlucky. This so, season with some of the stuff he's had so far, so, I think he should have scored a few more, and he has been a little bit unlucky with some of the stuff that he's had. Okay, right. So, I would honestly, I would like to see us at least at one point this season, <laughs> and even if it's like against fucking Norwich, which we all know Norwich is going down, right? I mean, it looks that way. Yeah, I would like to see yeah. us at least attempt to play with a false nine with Antonio up front. Um. I mean, is there a reason for that? I, whoa, whoa, whoa. So, hey, so let, me, let me back up for a second. So, Marseille okay. this season, and so I, I was, I was watching the Marseille game early, early today on BN Sport because yeah. they are the only other league in Europe that you can actually watch on cable television for free. Right, uh, that's true. Although, if you have Paramount Plus, no, 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 no cable. I, you're right. I get it. Yeah. No, no I get it. I get it. Yeah. My cable, cable. This if, is if, you, if you have BN Sport, which not many people have. But yeah, if you get it, yeah, you can watch it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but this yeah. is what pisses me off about European, European soccer. Like, that, the thing that we, like, that we lo- that I loved at least about the Premier League is I would get up at nine, uh, like 8 30 in the morning and turn around and, like, oh, wait, it's 8 30 in the morning. It's Saturday. I get to come downstairs and I watch the end of a Premier League match and watch Premier League mornings. It's like, yay. They get me ready for the day, and then for the day of matches, and matches happen. I'm like, yay! I feel like I'm a kid on Christmas every fucking week. <laughs> no, I, I feel you. I feel you. I do. Yeah, I do, but I do. so like literally, like because the Bundesliga went off the Fox Force and they went behind the ESPN Plus paywall. The Italian yeah. league went behind the paywall. Yeah. The fucking La Liga went away from being sport to the fucking paywall, and there's like maybe a batch or two. By, by the way, by the way, well, I'm just going to interrupt rambling for half a second here because you got me to thinking about um, when you mentioned Marseille, you got me to thinking about our boy Payet, who's still there. Yeah, he's still playing, well. he's still frankly playing. But did you see this gentleman? Did you see our former? Uh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Nazari. Samir Nazri about uh, somebody said he looks like a lesbian. <laughs> yeah, well, hang on, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 hang on. He does. Mate, they've been they've been calling him a lesbian. I remember being at City away in like 2013, and he went to take a corner, and I just heard somebody next to me. Oh, hey, Nadra, you lesbian looking cunt! If I got <laughs> if I got highlights and played five aside in DC in a league, you're looking at look it. at the honors on it. Hang on, so hang on, Lucas, you and I, we need to go to pitchers at one point. <laughs> You know even the, yeah. even the bloke well, behind. Let me see. Uh, pitchers is a lesbian sports bar. Okay. Even the even the opposition uh, player is looking at him going. He's looking at him. Like, the ugly <laughs> bastard. This guy was a world class <laughs> player at one point. Yeah, but, but, Good uh, lord, that is. I mean, listen. I I'm not I'm not in super great shape myself. Not even looking at the front. Is, look at the trunk. This is he's a professional huge. footballer. Look at what he's got going on back here. Look at this. Yeah. I tell you what. I tell you what. Speaking of you know, trunk today. <laughs> hey, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. Speaking but, of trunk. But on but on a but on a more serious note, so like Marseille's been playing in a false nine. <laughs> the whole wait, 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 I got you. About uh, how Marseille's playing a false nine, and that's a very interesting thing. In the Marseille today. It was a very interesting um, offensive display to watch. They ended up winning four one, but at the same time, it, just, it was, and two of the goals came off set pieces. But at the same time, it was just it was a very very weird and very unique situation that I've never really seen at, um, put out accurately. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm just like, and so and I try to look back 
try to go back and find articles about clubs that have had false nines and played false nines in given seasons. I mean, but I don't think we do that with Antonio. Why would we do that with Antonio? I don't well, think the problem it. is the problem is with us. Right, right. we're reliant. Right. Hang on, go ahead, James. Go ahead, James. Go ahead, James. Right, we're reliant so much on Antonio. If he goes down, we haven't got another striker there. Like, yeah. every, right. like you can say Bowen goes there. I like Bowen. I was impressed with Bowen today. I think he's doing well. He's he's cracked it on and off As the pitch. As a winger, he's great. As a winger, right. he's great. Yeah. But I don't I don't want him and, up top if we and can help. Also it, a cracking new chance. Are you are oh, you sort yeah, of that was a great chant. Yeah. Are you yeah. sort of saying now take him out, put him in? What are we gonna do? Put Flassage in. Man, Flassage hasn't done a lot. Flassage right. does not look good to me, and we should talk about him too with games mm. coming up. Yeah. And <laughs> the boy timely. Yeah, oh, no, no, but no, I, 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 I'm giving him time. I've got to disagree I, I, on that. I am, no, I am giving him time. I, but, I mean, the, as James has said many times, and I do agree with James on this, he doesn't have time, all right? If he's there is no such thing as time. In, we'll... That's what I'm saying. And that's we where are I'm time. With you, James. That's where I'm with you, James. Go ahead. But keep it, talking. We, I, no, but we, had the, we, had this, we had this same discussion before, and we came to the same conclusion, which was that Ben Rama was in exactly the same position, but you gave him ben time. Rama, ben Rama had played in uh, the championship and been schooled in the championship for about 18 months before he went to the Prem. Flassie's had 12 games at Everton, done nothing. Even the Everton fans said, why he the hell are you young, buying this? He was young. He was young. We could say that but, for anybody but Tom, that's coming to this team. Listen. Four I'm going to say this to you right now. Came, I'm going to I'm going to ask this question. When he came over. Right, I'm going to ask this question right now. It comes to January. Said Ben Rama goes to Algeria to the African Cup of Nations. We need Flassies to play, right? Oh, I is he good? Is he is he good enough to come in and do a role? Uh, right, from what you've seen, can you see him doing better than Ben Rama at present? But that that is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that. Vlasic needs the same sort of time because he he's getting the same sort of minutes that Ben Rama was when he first joined. Right, so he he's going to come in. He so he's going to come in in January. He's going to take Ben Rama's place. He needs to perform, doesn't he? Yeah, but he may do. That's the thing. We don't know. He might do. But again, when Ben Rama finally got the minutes and was starting week in, week out, and he was producing and is producing, but we won't talk about the fact that he's gone very quiet the last few weeks himself. But he needed that time to fit into the system that Moyes wanted to run. He needed Moyes to coach him in the defensive side of his game, to come back when we needed him to track back, which he does now with excellent, like his work rate and up and down the pitch is fantastic, especially defensively. is is one side of his game that has improved so much. Right. But you've got to give Vlasic the same time. He can't, do much, and as Lee just said, there time is what he doesn't have because he gets yeah. what a token. It's either not 20 fair to him. Minutes, it's not ten fair minutes to, him, but, to five but, minutes. Exactly. If, if he but thirty three point five million, thirty three point five million plus add-ons, which adds up to thirty eight million. Are you telling me that uh, a player of that caliber needs time I to bed into our club? Ben Rama. ben Rama was worth twenty plus mil last season, and again, twenty four. Twenty four million with a loan yeah, that's with a still a lot of money. That's still a lot of money. And everybody was questioning at the time, hang on a minute, have we wasted twenty four million? But some fans like yourself were saying, Give him time, he'll come good. And he did come good. Fair play. Like he did he did come good, but that's the same thing with Vlasic. I, I'm gonna, to give I'm them gonna time. tell you, I thought Ben Rama was better earlier than Vlasic has been, personally. So so I, I totally agree. I, I, I thought, he, I thought, so I think it's a no, no, but statistically, it's a no it's debate. James is trying, no, but statistically, it's a no it's debate on Ben Rama Vlasic. Just what no James is statistically all. trying to say is that Ben Rama was better, but he wasn't because he didn't. He, yes, he had a couple of assists in some of the cameos that he played before well, he sort of started getting regular minutes, but he still was not getting that time, which Vlasic is also not getting. Same for four nows when he first came in, 25 million or whatever right. it was. I mean, so he hey, so hey, he when he wanted to cross the line well, some when Ben Rama, did, but not everybody. I, I, when I, Ben Rama I, arrived, I, I go back and watch the tapes. I had faith yeah. in Ben Rama. I'm, not, I'm sorry, yeah, but I did. So did I. When Ben Rama arrived, by the way, he... there's Jared Bowen's new girlfriend. Everybody, so. not bad. Oh, Almost oh, it's an excuse to post his picture. Who is this she is, now? This is this is Danny Dyer. This is Danny Dyer's daughter, right? Yeah, this is going to blow your mind, Zach. That's Danny Dyer's daughter. Danny Dyer. Danny Dyer's daughter, and her name is Danny with an I. Danny Dyer, this is 100% West Ham related content, okay? Legitimate, uh, legitimate for the show because she is Jared Bowen's girlfriend. And what were they singing today? Bowen's on fire, he's shagging Danny Dyer. 
That's a fantastic mm. song. I okay. mean, I loved it. I loved so it. When when Lucas was talking, ben, Lucas was talking about it earlier. So hang on. Going so, back to what you were saying about yes. Ben Rama, when Ben Rama arrived last yeah, season, he right, he was he wasn't expected to, to come in and be the master class player. Everyone thought Lee they were buying Pyatt. Hold on. Everyone thought that they were buying Pyatt two point oh. Right. Yes. I, I that admit was not fair to him. To, that was never fair to him. Yeah. Right, and that was never fair to him because Plus he's not high yet. We sold Grady and brought Ben Rama in. Right, so were, everybody was upset about selling Grady. Ben Rama came into a very difficult situation. Yeah, he did. He began. He yeah. began his first game away at Leeds last season in a two-one victory. Run the show. Yeah, he, he, he played. He played over Christmas. He he played pretty decent over Christmas. Did not play one minute on <laughs> Boxing Day because David Moyes didn't put him on the pitch. Right. In the new year, from January, the whole of January, was, we was unbeaten, and he played every game. I will let you finish. <laughs> I will let you finish. <laughs> so anyway. it is what it is. All right, so I, I got one point to make about this. Can I just quickly jump in, just beca- just just really quickly, just really quickly? Yes. I will. I would, Danny I would, says yes. So I ahead. would ask every single one of you now: When Pablo Fornals first joined the club for twenty-five million, everybody looked at him and they said. He's not got much pace. Why is he playing as a a wide midfielder? Surely maybe he's a better player in behind. No, Moyes wanted to keep sticking him out wide. And he wasn't great for the first six to 12 months that he was at the club. Now he is like a second son to everybody. His work rate is unbelievable. It doesn't matter where you play more of his lack of pace and everything else. He will find a way to get into the game. And I, from what I've seen, and I have watched a few of uh, wherever he came from in Moscow before in the Champions League and games that he's played. Yes, give him that time, give him that confidence, like we did with Ben Rama, like we did before now, is give him a chance to gel with the fans and see what happens. The fact that people are willing to write them off after just, what, three or four games where he's, fair enough, he played a couple of 90 minutes in the Europa League or one 90 in the Europa League and one in a cup competition or something. I don't know where it was. Okay. But... Give them We're time. Do you have right. to remember as well? We didn't. He didn't right. get a preseason with us because we signed him very late on in the window. He didn't get a time to gel with the team, and now you're asking him to come in and play. And he probably doesn't even, you know, he hasn't well, had that if, time to adjust. If the front four get injured, he has to play. Yes or no? Fine. If then he gets right. the minutes, and then I can, then we can judge him after a consecutive, right. you know, right. three or four games he played for ninety minutes. Seconds he he's played. He's played games. Listen. Let's not make her. He hasn't played no games. He come on as a sub against Southampton. He started against Manchester United. He started against Dynamo Zagreb. He started against Rapid Vienna. Let's not make her. This man has not played no games. Please. Just get him uh, back. Just, silly now. Just, just, in reality, let, he hasn't on, played let, a let, lot let of go. minutes. Sally, Sally, and when he it. comes on, he has not played a ton of minutes. All right, so what, what do you got? What do you got? What do you got? I was going to say a couple of things. Just, just, to play, just to play devil's advocate. Um, to kind of both of uh, Tom and James's point, um, I guess one on the point of the games that he started, we've only lost one of them, barely, because it could have been a draw. And then kind of a devil's advocate point, or a question rather, not really a point, but I don't necessarily think, James, that the question is, is he better or should he be at the same level as Ben Rama if he goes out? I think the question is, is he going to be better than Lanzini? Because you know Lanzini's next up when it comes to midfield. So I think, and I'm, I'm not sitting here saying either way that he's good or that he's bad. Um, yeah. You know, I I think the jury's out on him. But I think for the price tag, yes, he should start. I do agree with you on that. But I do think at the same time that he might not be the next one on the pecking order. And that Lanzini, maybe right now, just because he's used to the team, is ahead of him. So would you say that he would be better than if you had to choose between one of them two, Lanzini or Vlasic? Well, I think the fact that Vlasic in, didn't play today well, means it proves 100% it. he started against Genk. A hundred percent he was the fact that he didn't uh, yeah, play today. I would agree with you on it that. proves it, doesn't it? Really Let's be honest. Play. When Lanzini's getting subbed on before other players and Vlasic is nowhere to be seen. And let's be honest here, I will hold my hands up and say Openly right now, Ben Rumble was not at the races today. I thought he was very, very poor. And I will admit that because I'm not a biased West Ham fan. I won't sit there and go, you know what? I, lo- I like Ben Rumble. made some but bad gonna... decisions today, James. Yeah, he wasn't yeah. great. Yeah. Granted, but nor was Four Nails. Four Nails weren't unbelievably great either. Right? Four nails the whole... they, they both took the... some shots they should not have taken. Not, not The best, the best player out the front four today was Bowen for me. I thought Antonio was hit and miss. Like, 
running around everywhere, but yeah. not doing anything in front of a little bit out of form. A little bit out of form these last few weeks. But so. yeah. you've got to understand one thing: thirty-three point five million plus five million pound add-ons. We could have went and got a left back and a striker for that. Danny Ings was sitting in Southampton, and we've gone and got a geezer from Spartak Moscow or CSK Moscow. Yep. We've got to get into sort of reality here. Like, we can't, like, where are the signs we give him time? So, how much time do we give him? He's if... literally, as somebody's just put it there, he's played 108 minutes of Premier League football. It's like, that is literally one and a half games of football that he has played in Good the now. Premier League. You Good just you give them time. Well, uh, who's, uh, okay, let me ask you this then. Who's, whose place does he take? It's not a question the front of taking place. I'm not well, saying he's taking place. Right, he's got to take a place. He's got to take a place. He, uh, he was told that he can't. He don't like playing on the wing. He likes to play as a number ten. So, so basically, you're telling me he's here to take Ben Rama's place. I'm not saying that. He. I'm not saying that at all. He. He will. I'm sure over the next few weeks and months because. It is a very stacked schedule. And even Moyes said in his post-match interview that he's going to have to rotate a lot of the players in over the next few months, especially over the Christmas period and everything. At which point, mm-hmm. if, if if and then he was coming in and he played, you know, every other game and he was getting 80 to 90 minutes in those games, and if he if if then he didn't perform, I'd say, fair enough. All right, hold my hands up. He's not been great. Try maybe Lanzini in that role. And when you, Earlier you said, well, you know, it's interesting that he went for Lanzini more than Vlasic. Maybe but that was because he preferred Lanzini's defensive work rate over Vlasic at that point because Lanzini has played a central midfield role for us before and done it quite well. So maybe it was just a case of he preferred the defensive work that Lanzini offered that Vlasic didn't. We don't what know. Do guys, what do it's not a question of, of taking places. It's a it's question of having point five million. It's 30, 30, It's 33.5 million well spent at present. Yes or no? Right. Was, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. right well, wait a minute. Well, was 35 well, million well spent on Anderson. Was 40 million well spent on Alain? No, we could go in ahead. the first yeah. season, Anderson yeah. in the first season was money well spent. But we got two and a half million pound back for him. So how does that right. work? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. He, he was good in the first yeah, season, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. But we got two and a half million back for him. I yeah, threw the flag here. He was good in the first season, though, wasn't he? Do you know what I mean? So he was good in the season, worth. You can't too the money back. You care too much about the money back. I can't tell if you do with tax rates. I mean, stupid taxes on literally everything. But whatever it is, it drives me fucking crazy. It's like, oh, we spent 50, we spent 50 million for this guy. I don't know what he's talking about. Like, oh, we only got 13 million back. Oh, we lose 2 million debt. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. Well, Zach, exactly. if, if we were... If we, we need we were to learn new- how to fucking deal with this shit. We need to uh, learn how to write off the fucking losses. If, if we were Newcastle and we were owned by war criminals and uh, and terrorists, then so we wouldn't have to worry about money. Well, I right? think we're not. Had, we're owned by had, pornographers. Had, first off, to be honest, if I had Jeff Bezos' money, I would I would literally buy West Ham and I would completely turn West Ham around and we would, we would not be like Manchester City. We would not be like the study oil sheet, yada, yada, yada. But we would we would have a fun time. We would be a very good. We would be in the Champions League. So my, I mean, all right, go ahead. My my one thing for it, I guess, if you're trying to look at the whole transfer window, uh, kind of on both sides of the coin. And he came in for big money. I think. uh, I think the 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 players that we brought in, like (laughs) let's say Krav Vlasic, and um, I don't know, I can't think of the third gentleman's name, but the the players that we brought in, or uh, 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 I, I think. Specifically, Zuma, those Zuma. players were brought in not to play immediate Premier League football, but for the for the cup runs. You know, to have players who you know international players, all three of them. That we brought I, in I, I totally agree. The problem, so, the only problem is, Sally, as you know, as you know. Uh, yes, I think that's very true. As you know, though, we have so few players and so few no, players yeah. ready players. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm they may have not, to step in. You, you can't I, bring somebody who's not ready for the Premier League. You can't. Right. You know. No, I agree, and and I'm not going to sit here and pretend like just because we brought in some players to help us with the cup run that it was a, a window well done. I and mean, I'm glad that we brought people in. Shocker was in the last day of the window because that's when we decided to do business. But mm. James is right. You know, we do need a quality backup striker. We do need uh, a quality a left back. Left back, yeah, starting or backing up, whichever one. Um, you know, we kind of took care of the goal of the of the goaltender situation, kind of. In the sense, and the only reason I say kind of is because I think Ariola probably has deserved to start. Um, but so, that's, to that's me, a conversation. To for me, a Sully, and I'm going to say I this do, like, I quick and fast. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think it, I think he was a panic player. Ariola. I really do. 
Oh, yeah. No, not Areola, uh, Vlasic. Because yeah, there was no links. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure on it, mate. There was no links about it. There was no rumours. There was no nothing. It was like, oh, we've been, like, we're going after Vlasic all of a sudden. Sure. I believe, and this is through people I've spoke to, um, I believe we tried to get Lingard. We couldn't get Lingard, and we had to go and get someone. So, hey, and, sure, hey, yeah. sure, 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 hands, sure, hands. Who's mad that we could not get Lingard back? I'm not mad. I, right, I, I'm mad. Right I, I don't think. You know what? You know what, Zach? We talked to Tom Clark a couple of weeks ago, who just covers West Ham for Football London, as you guys probably know. And we talked about Lingard, and you know, Tom said uh, that he thought that Lingard just can't cut ties with Manchester United because that was his boyhood club. Right. That was the club he supported growing up. And if he, he leaves now, right he's now. gone forever. He's never going back. Don't forget, he can sign a pre, pre-contract agreement in, in December. I don't think he's coming. I think Tom's right. I don't think he's coming. Well, so I, I, I look at a guy like Declan Rice. And Declan Rice, he, uh, his boyhood club was Chelsea. That was his youth club. And then all of a sudden, they come to they, they, they got rid of him, though. That's yeah. Yeah. They yeah. bounced him. Yeah, yeah I'm, just kind of, I'm just kind of like fig- trying to figure out where loyalties lie, and it's like hard to. And it's just kind of like, well, if, listen, if, let, let me put it this way. Without a I think, thank, it's God, thank God this didn't happen. If Chelsea had promoted Declan Rice through the academy, if Declan Rice had 150 appearances now for Chelsea or whatever he's approaching with West Ham, I, no question in my mind, he'd be extremely loyal to Chelsea. He grew up a Chelsea supporter. His best friend plays for Chelsea. Yeah. But he, he wouldn't be playing he, the same position. He wouldn't be in the same position. Thank God we got him, all right? And I don't know how yeah, long we're going to have him. Ha- I, look, whatever fucking witchcraft voodoo bullshit we had to get to get him, we literally owe them uh, We owe them a fucking we animal. Just signed no, they, it wasn't any of our thing is, the best in. way, they let the best way of summing it up, the best way of summing it up with that yeah. is would you see Jesse Lingard sitting on our bench? In front of our no. players. No, exactly. I don't think so, but no. I think... so, no, he was so there you go. Of, he was one there of our three best players when he stepped into the team last season. All right. Yeah. Along with Declan and maybe Antonio at the time, or maybe Suchek. I don't know. But you're talking about one of the three, four best players in the club immediately, just like that. The thing is, this way of saying that would relegate Ben Rama to the bench again. Yes. Maybe. But then also it could also relegate four now. So it could make Bowen it, like, be liven up honestly. a bit. Or it, or it could be. Yeah. Yeah, like any number of them, yeah. but the difference is when you look at it with Vlasic, yeah, he ain't gonna take Antonio's place because he's the only striker at the club. He ain't gonna mm-hmm. take four his place because everyone rates his work rate. Ben Rama's the most skillful player at the club, and Bowen's the most hard working on the right hand side. So you tell me who's, who's, who's place That's he takes. Who disagrees with your point. He takes anybody's place he wants to take, though, James. Don't you think? I mean, isn't that the problem? Lingard steps in. He, he's isn't he right now? Wouldn't you take him over Ben Rama or Bowen? If he were a permanent West Ham player, I think right him? now he starts over oh, Bowen because Bowen hasn't been able to score. That's and what I mean. He starts with, over it. It's an odd one with me with Bowen because I think he's getting better. But I, I do agree with Tom on one thing. I think he's been unlucky, but yeah, his end yeah. product, his end product's got to get better. That's the whole thing for right now, though. If we're being honest, but then Antonio gets away with murder, in my opinion. No, like, of he, he course, one thousand percent. Antonio, Antonio runs hot and cold. Can we agree on yeah. that? Yeah, I agree. Earlier in the season, he was unbeatable. Right now, he's out of form. And I don't know if his hamstrings are hurting him again. I don't know what he didn't go off to Jamaica to play in the qualifiers. That was good. But he, uh, he has not looked the same the last three or four games to me. Yeah, and that's the same thing to Ben Rama because that service that Ben so that's no, but the service I would say that Ben Rama usually gives him, I don't think it's been up to standard the last few weeks. The pair of them have looked off yeah. the pace together, even yes, maybe have. even the likes of four now. You hate Ben Rama, players. don't you, yeah. Tom? It's all right, mate. It's okay. No, I don't. I, I don't. It's not a good look, Ben. <laughs> on I, don't, I don't. I don't you at know, all. I just, I just think it's unnecessary hate towards Vlasic and. You know, but you, giving a guy time. but surely, we're really surely, happy, David, we're very happy. This is what we're but surely about. sitting there. You must think the 33.5 million, which is that's how much he cost, was would be surely uh, would have been spent elsewhere to strengthen the squad rather on one player who has done not a lot. Look, and he's if not, I was, if I was, if I was the manager on the board, I would have spent different money in different places, but. Vlasic was earmarked as somebody that David Moyes wanted. So if that was a Moyes player that Moyes wanted, instead as an alternative to Lingard, someone, which I believe that Lingard was never. Someone on the table. made a good point. Someone made a very, very, very good point to me. Right, this is why I don't think it's a, it's a Moyes signing. Yeah, I really don't, um, because I believe David Moyes has still got connections at Everton, somewhere along the line. He, he knows people at Everton. 
sure. and he would have he would have made uh, inquiries into saying right, what's this player really like? Right, and when I when I've heard from different people, he didn't get a good uh, report back from Everton, and I just feel I just don't think Moyes would have gone for someone who isn't getting a good rapport. Do you know what I mean? There was no links to this geezer. There was no rumours. It's just come out of nowhere. Right. It was a well, panic. It was a panic buy. So and I don't again, believe it the, last, the last thing I will say on it, though... And we have respect. The last thing I will say on it, though, as that geezer, David's right, I listen, I am happy. I'm just trying to defend it. Because when Philippe Anderson came in, right, we'll use him as an example just because it's a more recent one with all the money and stuff. When he first yeah. came in for that money, everybody's going, absolute steal. This guy was linked a few years back to Man United for 50-odd well, million. Brilliant. Yeah. Unbelievable. Six first six months, he was... Absolutely yeah. amazing, right? He was one of the best players in the yeah. Prem. Yes. But then when it got after those six months, after Christmas, he dropped off the face of the earth and into his second season dropped off to the face of the earth. Yep. So now he's back dominating. Well, yeah, I know. I know. You can look at you can look at another way. Hang on, hang on, I'm chance. not finished. What I'm trying to say is if if Vlasic is given that time, maybe he will live up to that price tag. He's a lot younger than Anderson was. There's always the upside to potentially it going the other way for him. But when he's literally played 108 minutes of Premier League football and he's in and out and getting 10 minutes here and there, you just can't judge a player. Yes, it's a lot of money, but there's the promise that hopefully yeah. one day he I will know. live up to that value. Whereas Anderson's price was going like that because he was getting older. The question older is, his when is, is that day? When is that yeah, when day? Is that day, is Tom? That day? Is it, have we got, is it have Spurs we got to wait 18 months for this man to perform? Well, so hang on, so hang on. Let's look back to Pablo Fernandes for a second. For now, we all won Fernandes out. Not all of us. I did not want Fernandes well, so out. Hang on, a lot of people did. A lot of people did. You're right. You're right. A lot of people thought he was a piece of shit. By the way, this is this is also an Andy Warhol. That's sitting ball. <laughs> but at the same time, like people won for Nels out and people were just yelling and screaming like, whoa, give him time, give him time, give him time. And now for Nels is one of the, one of the better players. Yeah, and it, and it was the same difference thing, is with Pablo the for now. The difference with the difference is... 20, no, but when we signed Arnautovic for 25 odd million, it oh, took right. him six months to perform on a cold day against Chelsea when he scored that goal. It came alight. And that's the difference the is with Pablo for now to then to now is we had we had multiple strikers at this club. We've got one gentleman, yeah. one striker at this club. Yeah. And people are telling me, right, well, go back to when Pablo Fornell signed in 2018. With dodgy we had, hamstrings, with dodgy Yeah, hamstrings. We, well, we had Antonio, we had, you know, who, who, who else we had? We had yeah, an average. Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. So let's not get carried away because about Pablo Fornells. Yeah, he's done well. Don't get me wrong, but we had multiple strikers, we had multiple left backs. We've got one left so, back who can defend, and we've got no, one striker. No, 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 but we, I was using Wait, it as an example. Tony, wait a minute. Not every player that comes in hits the ground running straight away, but then grows into that role and becomes a better player. Well, I can name time. you two players, Tom, that, right now, who's hit the ground problem. running at West Ham and recently. And one of them uh, scored the other week. Boeing come on, scored in his debut from Hull, Suchek, last uh, last time, come on. And then two lads kept us in the Premier League a year a year and a half ago. Yeah. So okay, they were both signed. No, but yeah. Suchek's been absolutely shocking this season. I don't think he's had one good game for us. So it he works was, both ways. He's fine he's dipping out of form. That's fine. how it works. Wait, Tom, didn't you think he was fine today until he got until he, until Freddy Krueger got after him with his uh, with his boot? <laughs> I thought it was one of his better games this season, but he didn't do anything special in terms I'll tell of you the reason, another, no for Suchek. I'll tell you another reason why Suchek yeah. hasn't been playing well. It's because Rice wants to go forward and Suchek's yeah. not as good a DM as yeah. Declan Rice. Declan Rice is a world-class footballer. It's become he's a, a world class. I think the team he's, wants Declan to go forward more. I don't yeah. know if it's Declan, Declan wants to go I forward. Think it's maybe both, Sally. I think it's maybe both. Sally. Credit to Moyes for the, the Dawson substitution today to allow Rice to go forward in the... In the ladder, let's be honest. When Suchek is making them late runs into yeah. the box, flying headers and all that, he's a good player. He's a very yeah. good player. When he's a, a DM and we're asking Rice to do that, he's not as good as Rice on the ball, I'm afraid. Passing wise, yeah. no, he's not he's, very good. And, I, and Sully, I think it's both. I think Moyes wants Rice going forward. I think Rice wants to go forward. He's scored yeah. a few goals now, he's got a taste for it, he loves a shot. We know that he loves a shot, and right. sometimes it's not a good decision to take those shots. But 
I think he wants to do it too. And he know, and he's a guy with a lot of influence and a lot of power because of who he is. He's the captain. He's probably our best player. Um, you know, he's the one who's with- happy. Look at you know what though I'm gonna say this about Thomas Suchek and you guys know this I'd have to tell you this quest, quest, question his form but please don't ever question his effort look at that man he bleeds yeah. for us on a regular basis and by the way by the way Bond villain do not tell me yes he does he does actually do not tell me that, that was an accidental incident today did yeah, you see so I, I'm, I'm step back that was fucking terrible. It was totally intentional. He steps back and and then cleats him. What do you don't call him? Cleats him. You can't see studs, Puts his studs in his face. He, I'm telling you. He just, tell me I didn't see that. Tell me I saw. What did I see? I saw something else. Tell me I didn't see that because I know I did. Huh? Just quickly, oh, Lee. Can I just quickly yeah. say from Lee because he doesn't? I don't think Lee knows. Uh, CB's in 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 prison for a couple of years. Lee, that's where he's gone. What? I, uh, yeah, I know. What? 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 No, no, no. Some, no, not you, Lee. Somebody in the chat called Lee is asking oh, where oh, he gone. Oh, 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 he's, sorry, he's in prison me. for a couple of years. Yeah. Listen. Uh, hey, listen, you guys. Seriously, Charlie Boy is one of my favorite people we've ever had on our show, uh, and he's uh, always been a very good guy to me. Uh, he's always been willing to come on. He knows his football. He loves West Ham. He's got family from East London. He went and defended his sister who was attacked and for defending his sister and because he had some priors from when he was much, much younger from literally like 20 something years ago, he's gone to the state prison in New York for two years. <laughs> and I, 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 yes. And I think it's a tremendous injustice. All right. I, personally, well, yeah. I think it's a huge injustice. Okay, so- um, I think he's a good guy who, who you know, is a good influence uh, on the people around him. And, and I and I think this is a huge injustice. But anyway. Uh, so can I throw the fly for a minute for a second? Yeah. So, I mean, why not? So what? So when I had the podcast that I did with uh, the guy in Fresno, who uh, didn't forget, uh, my yeah. best friend Gabby, uh, she was uh, sexually assaulted when she was at the University of Delaware. By the serial rapist of the University of Delaware. I remember this. Yes, you told me about this. Yes. Yes, and so I every at the end of every podcast, I try to make a big thing. I try to make a thing about making sure that if you're in a room with a woman or like or with somebody else, that, that you would announce what you were doing, make sure that they were okay with it. And if you were not, they were not okay with it, you'd stop doing that. And try to make sure that you, everything is broadcasted. And everything is alerted, yeah. yada yada yada. Yeah. And so she, for, first off, she actually listened to one of our, a couple of our podcast, podcasts that I made that announcement on, and she actually appreciated that because she was one of she was number two of six trials. There were thirty women that came forward against this motherfucker, and it was that's like, crazy. Well, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. First off, he's a fucking sexual. He he's currently in prison for. Five, five years, first trials, uh, one year, right. Gabby's trial, uh, plus, and then, so there's four more trials after him, and then afterward, and, and I told Gabby flat out, when he does get out, when he does get the eligibility for parole. Don't say it out loud. Well, we will be there, and we will say that. Yeah, Zach, I, you know, I got to tell you, buddy. Don't say it out loud. Be real careful, my friend. Be well, real so, careful. Like, this stuff is preserved forever, you know. Yeah, well, so I, I, told, I told her flat out. We will be there, and we will, we will vote to, we will tri- uh, tri- tri- uh, tell the tribunal to deny. The okay. Parole. Okay. Well, that's that's the, right. we're the, both we're both afraid yeah. of her because she's actually been yeah, intimidated yeah. by her friends, and during before the trial even began. I rate that, James. <laughs> Mate, right. I need all a drink right. when I come on here. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> People. Can, can, can I just can I just get People. back? Yes, I agree with. Listen, I agree with this completely. And you know, we, we oh. love him, and, and I wanted to keep him in our thoughts and our prayers. And however you look after somebody, you know, please do that for Charlie, will you? Because he's a good guy. Uh, yeah, all man. right, I, I want to go back for a second to the stomp on Suchek. All, right. all right, this was a stomp. I, I, I kept I kept reading after the match on Twitter. Oh, it's accidental. It's accidental. It's not accidental. He 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 steps back. He, you don't do this when you're when you're pursuing the ball, all right? He steps yeah. back and 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 studs him in the face. How is I mean? First of all, you got Matic who kicks to fall on the balls and injures his groin, and nothing happens because it's Manchester United, of course. Nothing happens. 
now you got this situation. Mean, is there, you know, is there going to be no discipline for this? What? How is it not obvious to me that this was a, this was a stomp in the face? Oh, I guess it still could come out as as him being disciplined because I'm sure it'll be someone that they look at uh, uh, prior to this, but maybe not because it wasn't a card given. But I don't know. It's it is it is frustrating um, because I feel like stuff like this kind of happens to West Ham players a lot, and nothing really happens. But then the second we, you know accidentally you know you know maybe even on purpose but i can't think of an on purpose situation do it to somebody else you know they're immediately like suchik last year got that red card for nothing you yeah. know um but um real quick before i forget because there was a question and it is changing subjects a little bit and i wanted to ask uh this is a question for everybody but i guess uh you know james and and Tom and, you know, me and James haven't had a chance to talk for a while. So love the back and mm. forth. But I know you were saying Vlasic was possibly a panic buy from stuff that you heard. Do Bye. you think that Crawl could have been in the same way? Or uh, let me rephrase that question. Do you think that we signed Crawl because Suchek and Sufal know him? Yes. Oh, yeah. you, oh, 100%, okay. mate. 100%. I'll tell you the reason why <clears throat> with Crawl. We've, we, we was always linked with Crow because of the Suchek and Cafel connection. Yeah. And I think they spotted a gap in the market, West Ham, so they could get a loan with a view to a permanent at the end of the season. Connor Coventry can go out and loan, which I weren't really happy about. I remember coming on here before and I said, you know what, I think Connor done well enough in pre-season to get a chance. For a couple but, of years now, actually. Yeah, no, right, so I thought Connor had done his time no, right, to sort of earn his spot. Yeah. Let's be honest, we haven't seen nothing of Alex Crow. I've seen him have one good game and I ain't seen him since. I think someone stole his boats or something. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, yeah. And well, I think I, I, I kind of think the same thing for him too was I think, and obviously this is just my speculation, but I think that all three of those players that we signed were brought in and told like, hey, you know, at least for the beginning part of the season, you guys are just for cup runs because if something were to happen to them in a match that they started for the Prem or maybe the yeah. Carabao, if they were to get hurt, then it would put us, you know, back in the sticky situation. Now, granted, that's just, that's just me. And, mm. and there's um, certain games though, I must admit, I will say one thing, there's certain games this season where Crow should have been on the pitch. I which agree. Like, where, like, um, against uh, Rapid Vienna, Mark yeah. Noble, Mark yeah. Noble's plan instead of Crow. Why? Yeah. Like, I don't understand that one. I don't either. He, he played against, um, what was this? There was another game. Even the other week against Brentford. Right? We were poor in that game. Suchek was um, not at it in that game. And like, give Crow a go. I just don't understand why Crow was not playing. Now, <clears throat> with Crow, yeah, there's, I, I, there's another one I can't work out with Moyes. Is he being stubborn? Yeah. Is he being so, like, Someone said, I never say, oh, I forget it. I think I've done it on my, on my platform. Yeah. Someone put he, in the comments. It's, it's, you know, he doesn't like new players, James. You know how yeah, he is. It's, he it's like, like the mafia. Them. Someone said it's like the mafia. Uh, uh -huh. it's, so hard to get, it's so hard to get into when you're in the it. Scottish like, mafia, you're in, which is a real thing, by the way. Yeah. Yes, yeah. It's you're, weird. You're in it for life. Well, so, I mean, I would think Crowell, to me, unlike Vlasic, Crowell's the guy who seems to have mostly stepped in and been pretty capable in that role, I think. I mean, um, I, I, and I'm with you. He could have played against Rapid Vienna. He could, you know, he should, he should be getting minutes in those Europa League games, especially at but, this stage. When can I, can I, can I just interject again, just for the no? For the, for the, <laughs> <laughs> of course, that's why we're here. That's why we're here. No, we're here to just, interject. It's, just it's mute just them. The time aspect of the. Fair enough. Crow's on a shorter leash because he's on a loan, not with an obligation. I don't think he's an obligation to buy. It's potentially one of them ones if he plays a certain amount. So loan. It's a loan with a view to a permanent. Yeah, so it, he's he's on a short leash because we don't have to sign him potentially at the end of the season. But what I That's would say right, again is, yeah. Jaden Sancho, when he came to United, and I was just thinking about it, I just quickly popped off to the toilet. Like, Jaden Sancho, when he come over, big, big money for an English player who has played right. English football before. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. He's right. played in, in England before. And yep. he has played a lot of minutes in both the Champions League. He started in the Premier League for a few games now. He's played a lot wow. more minutes than, than Vlasic has. And he has literally done next to nothing for his price tag. Wow. 
Right. So again, it happens with players, but if I'm sure the United fans right now are going, well, hang on a minute, where's this 70, 80 million pound player that we've bought? If you give right. him time and let him adjust to life back in England and that United team where he's not exactly the main man like he and may when he ain't When he ain't performing, Tom, when he ain't performing, who takes his place? Well, he goes on either side. I mean, to be fair with you, Rashford's been there. I know, right, but yeah. So that's a... Now Rashford's back, right? Does Jadon Sancho start for you? Yes or no? <laughs> for that price tag, you better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for that price right, for that tag. Price, so, so for the price tag now, it's not for his ability, it's for the price tag. So Sancho's not performing, but he's 73 million. Marcus Rashford has just come back, who's, I'm going to be honest, is a better player than Sancho. You've got, Sancho, you've got Sancho or Rashford on one side. You've got Greenwood on the other side. Well, realistically, got Sancho is a right midfielder by trade, so he should be on the right ahead of Greenwood. But Greenwood is lighting the world on fire at the moment, so he can't be right. dropped. So what you're saying is then, uh, Flash should play because of his price tag then, basically. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying... Well, no, look that's not that's money, what Look at how much money was spent on Sancho... And he yeah. isn't delivering for what they. Our Man United, for. our Man United, relying on on Jadon Sancho to perform every week, week in, week out. Yes no, no, said, price tag, you, you should have hoped. You should Thank have hoped you, Sally. I think. Thank you. One, ahead, one thing I'll say too, and it's, I don't even devil's advocate's probably not even the the phrase to use, but I think the two different things between us and I'll just say Man U, and I know Man City was brought up earlier is is the price stuff and i think luxury comes into play as well right look at look at man city last year when we played them on the road we had a pretty well fought game against them lost you know whatever but their yeah. bench is damn near worth our entire club okay all right I'll do, I'll play, I'll play i just want to say something hold on i'll, I'll, do, I'll, I'll say one thing i just say one thing for you when dear to aston villa the Jack Grealish money, £30 million for a player that has played in the Championship and the Premier League before. Has he lived up to the price tag? He started every single week for them. Well, no, he hasn't. But that's... given time, he may be a decent well, player. I'm not being funny. I just want to say something. Yeah, Dave M, yeah, I've got a lot to say positive about West Ham. If you can't take right. being real, then fair enough, right? <laughs> Secondly, can we, stop, can we stop comparing other teams and other players? We are West Ham United. I don't care what Manchester right, United me... do. Hold on, right. Sally, hold on. I just want to say one thing. Manchester United spent 150 million, right? Or plus, yeah. West Ham only spent 40 million plus Haller's money. So let's get right. let's get uh, into context. We've got one striker at this club, one left back at this club who can defend, right? And we are relying on Antonio, whose hamstrings are thin. We need to get real, yeah. 33.5 million pounds could be spent on a striker. Is that who's, his fault though? Usman right. Edward. Is is Usman Edward. Is hold that on. Vlasic's fault? Usman right. Edward is sitting in Celtic. He could have come. He, we could have signed him and got um, Tanafiko, whatever his name is, from Ajax. That's your money. So, right. so you tell me what, what we're asking. Is that Vlasic's fault? Very quickly, very quickly, very quickly. I gotta go. I got a, I got an emergency to deal with. All right, Zach. Uh, no way, okay, buddy. Great to talk to you all. Um, I really, this is like, I really miss having a having a radio show with you all. Listen, <laughs> oh, thank, nice. thank you for being on. I appreciate it. And we'll talk to you again soon. Hope everything's all right. All right. Take care of yourself. Yeah, hope everything's all right. Take care of yourself. Yeah, I'll, right. I'll, I'll put, a, put a link. I'll, I'll send a thing in the chat or Chad, just let you know what's going on. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. I miss, I'm, I literally miss it, but this was fun. We'll do, we should do this again at some point. Of course. Well, we're going to do it more often. We're going to do it on a regular basis. So that sounds more fun, that sounds more fun than a barrel of monkeys. I gotta, I gotta, a barrel of monkeys does not sound the least bit fun to me. It sounds terrifying. It's an old school expression, Darren Leverett. <laughs> you all right. know what that means. Thank you for being on, Zach. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. Um, right, until another time, Bubba Swastam. <laughs> All right, all right. I want to go back to uh, thank you to Zach. Zach is always, always, always. What it is, there. what it is, Lee. I just want to say this: yeah, Tom makes a good yeah. point. It ain't Bassett's fault on the price tag, but you have to sort of show something to to justify it. At least do did, something. When he was, at, he did when he was at Moscow. He he showed that he was good enough to be in the Champions League and playing regularly for them, being their player of the season, being a Russian Premier League player of the right. season. He did that. It's not his fault. Yarmolenko yeah, does that every international, mate. But he's not class. So let's let we we got to get real now, right? He can't even get on the pitch, Flasage, at present. 
He can't even yeah, come I, on. I think, I think, you know, James, let me, let me just, let me ask you this, all right? That's what I'm I, saying. No, I think I'm doing the time. Uh, going back to, listen, David, <laughs> everybody's Christ. very happy with how we're doing, all right? I'm happy with our results. I'm happy that we're doing well in Europa League. I'm very happy. What I see that I think James and I might agree on here yeah. is I see it as this is very thin ice, all right? Maybe that's not a good metaphor. This, this thing could end just like that with one key injury. Do you know what I mean? I agree. It, it, just like that with one key injury. Antonio goes down. Uh, I don't know. Bobby. Bowen goes down. Even Ben Rama in that in that number ten position. I was going to mention that the only thing against certainly him Declan is Rice, and we're in a lot of trouble. Of time. Right. So yeah, while everybody's healthy, we're rolling along pretty well. I'd like to see our home form, but we're rolling along pretty well. One key injury, just like Declan Rice last season, and it's, it's unfortunate. And that's really not our fault. No, it's mm. and Moyes even said that he thought we'd have been in Champions League if Rice hadn't gotten hurt at the end of last season. He said he has to come out and said fact. That. And that may be true. Uh, one key injury and the whole thing falls apart. We've seen this before. We went down in 2011 when Scott Parker got injured at the end of the season. He couldn't play the last three or four games, and we, we, we collapsed. This is, this is we are one injury from this happening again, and I think that's what worries me. And the question for me with Vlasic, Tom, is not so much do we give him time, it's does he have time. As long as he has time, great. But one day he may not have time anymore, and then he okay. has to step in. You know what yeah, I'm saying? No, that, that's that's yeah. that's why we're. I all agree. Right. I'm nervous. I absolutely I'm agree. Right. Everything what Lee's just said there, because it's exactly how I look at it. No, this man does not have time. He does. He's what 22, 23. He's on a five-year contract. About, it's about the squad. We we don't it's know yet if he has time. That exactly, Lucas. We don't know if he has right now. Sure. Right now, with with the healthy Ben Rama, with with the healthy Bowen, healthy. Sure. Fine. One of these guys, especially like a Ben Rama goes down, you know, somebody uh, we have, we have a, a serious injury and all of a sudden he's got to step in. Uh, and, and I don't know whether he can do it. All right. I don't know whether he can. I think that's... he can. Well, I hope um... so, but he's Croatian loosely, Lucas. That's why you think he can. Yeah. I don't mind me. My... Oh, you, guys, you Slavs, man. You guys stick together. Like nobody I've ever seen. Do you anyway, see that bastard Suchek today? He's massive. <laughs> well, I love to check, even though he's been out of form. Go ahead, go ahead, Sally. Go ahead, Sally. <laughs> Almost made James spit out his delicious beer. No, uh, <laughs> yeah, nearly. No, so what the point I was going to make earlier about, um, and it's not comparing teams, it's just, I just hadn't had the chance to get to my point yet, mm. is I do agree on a couple of points that both that everybody's made, right? One is that. For, for price tags, there is a certain expectation that comes with players. But at the same time, I will say that a price tag is almost always going to be uh, a misnomer because at the end of the day, the player still has to perform regardless of how much money they are. And I was using those other teams as an example because look at uh, – what's what's that guy on Manchester United? Odebeek or whatever his name is? That's not what we're uh, saying, but, Novelist. That's not what we're saying. Anyway, go Van de Beek, right? Van de Beek, yeah. So they brought him in. He was a stunner. You know, he helped, you know, Ajax get mm. the Champions League and all that stuff. Can't touch the field. And they bring players in in that same position to actively still not play him. Mm. Now, my, my thing, I guess, kind of on the other side of that point is no matter what players we bought, the money that we paid for them – is still 30 million pound, 40 million pound, whatever. That's, you know, not necessarily the hundred some million pound that we pay for somebody else. So there might also be that same aspect of this player's worth 30 million pound. We have a hundred million pound player on the, the team. Go, that's the going rate these days, isn't it? For, for right, a player. right, right. No, and I, I guess I'll just get to it. I don't, I, I don't know. I've never been one to look at price tags because, um, Bowen wasn't a lot, and he's outpaced, you know, whatever we paid for him. Mm. Uh, you know, then we, obviously, you know, we have the whole Hilaire thing. He comes in, sometimes he's good, most of the times he's not. He's out. We don't sell him for a lot. I, I think yep. we, we can't necessarily get too hung up on price tag. Um, but I guess, too, the whole time thing is with this club, it's not a matter of if, it's when. And I do understand the hesitancy of saying that Vlashes might not be it. But I do also agree with the fact that we can't say that we've seen enough of him to have an opinion on him, especially yeah. when it comes specifically to yeah, Premier League. What, what I understand is, though, uh, Sonny, you make a good point, yeah. right? Yeah. People are saying they've seen enough of him, uh, international, enough of him. So where is that 
in games. Like, and I use Manchester United at home as an example. Right. His home debut is in front of 65,000 fans. Antonio's suspended. I'm thinking, right, right we're going to see a bit of flashes today. He gets subbed right. after 60 minutes because he, he just he was poor. Like, yeah. that's your home yeah, debut, that, right? Yeah, 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 but that's against uh, United. The man's uh, not played in the Premier League before. It he's played 12 games debut. in the Premier League, Tom. No. 12. Uh, he's played more on, than me and you put together. 18, 19 so, at the time. <laughs> 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 he's played more than me and you, bro. One, one thing I'll say, too. Tom, that is yeah. the argument. That is the argument, though, Tom. It's not an okay. argument because he was 18, 19. All right. He's but I mean, changed is- as a player. He's a bigger player now. He's a lot stronger than he was. He's probably a bit more mature than he, you know, used to be. He's massive now. Exactly. To, he wasn't very good when he started for us. To, ex- to expand right. on on what you were saying, I played play ninety play minutes for the I first know. eight games of the season, and he had done absolutely nothing. I'd sit there and go, "Hang on a minute, that's thirty odd million well spent." Okay. But what we're saying here is that you're ready to write him off after. I'm not ready to write him off. Hundred and eight minutes of football. I am is not ready to write him off. What? Southampton, Dynamo Zagreb, Manchester United, Rapid Vienna. Well, come again, on, I'll say come come on, we, lost, we only lost one of those football. games. If, I mean, if we're just yeah. looking at based on the games he's played, we've only lost one of those. But and it was I right say, at the end, too. It was right, uh, at, the right end, at the end, yeah, and it should have been yeah. a draw. But anyway, to, to expand on what you were saying, too, and I hope I didn't forget the point I was trying to make, um, James, with the substitution, I think that – also is something that David Moyes could do better at is not just subbing, but subbing players that aren't actively doing well or, and just starting players that are doing better than others, you know, cause See, then, the thing is, Sally, and, I'll just want to say just, this. Just one, just one second. I don't yeah. want to forget. I'm, I'm, I don't want to cut you off. On, um, and in professional sports, when you're getting paid millions of pounds, dollars, whatever you want to call it to play right. a kid's game, you have to play your best players. Now, if for whatever reason, Suchek is not the best player at the time and Kral is, play him. If Declan Rice isn't the best player at the time, somebody else is, play him. Now, with those players, you have the luxury of having somebody who can fill in that spot. You don't have to worry about injury. But I think uh, David Moyes kind of – he doesn't do himself justice to a degree by not kind of switching it around a bit. And I understand being faithful to a winning lineup. But but I think – it would be good for him to know as well mm. what what Kral give, what Ariola give, what uh, right. what Vlasic give by starting them. Because I mean, you look at look at Ariola. He he's got what every game he started, he's got a clean sheet, damn near. Yeah, um, but then you can look at it. And Fab hasn't re- right. I I think we all know as West Ham fans. I've just got a couple of points I want to say. Ariola's right. a better goalkeeper. You all right. know it, right? Yes. We all right, yeah. we all not stupid. Yeah. But Fab hasn't done anything criminally wrong, so to speak. Right, to be chucked out. Right, maybe yeah, the Brentford game, goal. The Brentford goal was wrong. maybe the Brentford great. goal. Not I agree great. with everyone there. I'd like yeah. to see Ariola play in the Premier League, but I think yeah. it might be an arrangement cup league. Right, you make a few good points, Sully. Right, but also when you what you said about money, look mm-hmm. at uh, Vladimir Kufel. Right, come in for five point four million yeah, pounds. That's exactly my point. That's exactly right? my point. He should and be everyone, a lot more. And everyone thought this man is no good. Right, we've signed someone for five point four million. We can that can also go the other way. We can sign someone oh, for thirty three point yeah. five million who's a flop. Do you know what I mean? Hundred um, percent. So I look at it like this, right? Uh, someone just said there about uh, Craig Dawson. Craig Dawson come in as a backup. Right. He was a backup right. player. He was yes. fifth choice. He started the, uh, his first game in the West Ham show on the 29th of December, twenty twenty. Right. Trust me, I know because I've got a shit up memory. All right. Um, and the way I look at it is, is when we are asking one player to come in, right. whether you're playing Manchester United or whether you're playing Macclesfield Town or Mansfield Town, it really doesn't matter because mm. you should be playing, you should be giving it for the shirt wherever you're playing, regardless. Do you know right. what I mean? So um, when it comes to Flassage, do I think uh, he will come good? I just don't know, mate. I, I just don't. I just don't see Can nothing at the minute. Effort, uh, I don't question his effort, James. I question his ability. his effort. His efforts there, but is he what, really yeah. what we need? Well, that's what I, that's what I'm saying. I because don't question his effort. Tom I just want to say this quickly, Lee. I just Tom want to say this like, quickly. I was like five minutes to live over here. He's, 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 I know, he's, right? What it is, if, you, if you've got a choice between Manuel Lanzini or Flassage, who would you rather play? Well, Moyes chose Lanzini today. Um, there you go. And 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 I listen. I mean, I don't think Lanzini will ever be the player he was before, but right now, because he has experience in the Premier League and because he's 
been decent this season, I'm probably playing Lanzini. How about, and, about you? So, what about you? Well, it says it all, mate. If if Moyes is bringing on, if Moyes is bringing on Manuel Lanzini, and just Blasi- to do with the players of the attacking, he may have preferred his defensive work rate. It is a two flip side of the coin. Something that we said about Ben Rama last season, he improved on it. It's the same thing for Lanzini you can't, today. You cannot, you cannot bring Ben Rama into an argument that's got no argument whatsoever. When we are coming does from. because you're. Compl- I'm saying his defensive work rate, which Ben Rama did not have last year. Moyes right. likes his players to have a defensive work rate, so he that's may all- have preferred Lanzini today because he offered a bit more defensive work rate in the centre of midfield. You're telling me Manuel Lanzini is a better a defensive work rate player than that, is he? And he's been an attacking uh, the uh, player all his career. He's played a centre mid before. He's played a centre mid a couple of times for us over the last couple of years. Yeah, he, and he's yeah, actually he's done well in that position. And he's done well in that position. That's true, Tom. That's a good point. Yeah, now, Novelist wants to know, because he's a troublemaker. Uh, he's, 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 really, yeah. he's a troublemaker. Whose signing was it if it wasn't Moy signing, the Vlasic, uh, Mr. Pickle signing? I don't... I, I don't... I think it's saying... I think it's one of our owners, mate. I just, I just don't see it, Lee. I just don't see it because he don't play. He hasn't played in two games now, yeah. right? And the other week, and fair enough, he was he was about to come on, right? But he should have come on anyway against Brentford. But like, whether or not um, like Bowen scored, he should have been on the pitch, right? And today, let's be honest, Benny should have been uh, hooked well before he did. Yeah. And um, Fornells should have been yeah. booked, whether his work rates bang on or not, right? Yeah. They, he should they, have been they hooked. Were, they were. They, 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 I, you know what really surprised me, James? Even Yarmolenko now? today got on before Flassage. No, he Come gets on. a token two minutes every week. It could also be yeah, because yeah. we have Europe in the middle of the week, too. Because, I mean, Crow didn't come on either, so. He's Is got he? COVID. He's got coronavirus. Well, yeah, that's, 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 fair. that's my fault. Yeah. But, Is um, he, by the way, can he play? Gold ain't got to be a regular watcher. Yes. David Sullivan can. Can, wait, can, can, like Carl, that, can Carl play on Thursday if he's... If he he's just has to turn no, not. He has to return two uh, negative tests before Thursday to play. Okay, so all we got to do is find a two negative tests somewhere. Okay. <laughs> Son did yeah. it. So. Yeah, no. so, well, yeah. By yeah. the way, by the way, we should talk about this, all right? In the few the minutes we have left. Um, Thursday, Genk, in, in Genk, wherever that is, Belgium somewhere. Um Thanks. Obviously, we're going to have a very much changed uh, team. Uh, who do you guys see uh, coming in for us? Uh, Vlasic, and he's going to bang a fucking hat trick and shut everyone up. Well, I hope he does. Hold on, hold on a minute. If he bangs in an hat trick, mate, I'll be stunned. I'll be lucky if he gets sixty minutes. <laughs> well, I, okay. You know I mean? so if Crawl is available, do you see who do you see? Crawl, Crawl's not available, mate. Hundred percent. Not available. Hundred percent. Okay. Not available. Yeah. So we're gonna see. Uh, are, do we see Mark Noble again? Probably. He's Probably. injured. Somebody's playing for Suchek. I, I think he's injured. Mark Noble's injured. He's, he's got, got a hip injury. problem. Yeah, he's got a hip yeah. problem. Shot me if Lanzini played centre mid next week. Can Suchek play right now? Can is Suchek in the back? Suchek will probably. Probably. He'll, have to, he'll, have to put, he'll have to put a protective mask on if he could play, but I reckon he'll play Declan Rice and Lanzini in the yeah. centre of the park. I think Suchek needs a rest anyway. Personally, uh, he played twice he's with Czech Republic during the himself. national break. Rice did not play against Andorra. He's and he's younger and he's, I think, a little bit fitter. And you know, I hate to see him worn out too. But Rice is and he wants to play week in week out as well. I think no question he starts. He's durable Personally. and I think he can do it. He wants to play European football. That's what this is. Yeah. Uh, so Rice and 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 maybe Lanzini then slotting back into that uh, defensive uh, area. The plays don't start me, Lawrence, because I do. <laughs> Uh oh! I thought you know what I don't win. Yeah. Well, Charlie, Noble do you know is, what Noble, Charlie Noble Walsh made an excellent man, so, Charlie yeah. Walsh made an excellent point today on the Hammers Chat Watch Line. I joined for what? two minutes at half time. Charlie Walsh, come on, made an excellent point. If Alaire played in the system that David Moyes is playing now, rather than the system he played when we played with the four or five at the back, strange thing, he would have probably thrived a lot more. Alaire did in Moise's system, this system with at least three attacking players in behind him, I think he would have done a bit better. Tom Effers, I agree with you. Oh, hey. oh, it's so warm and cuddly in here. <laughs> look at him, look, he's about to look at him, look. He doesn't know whether to get drunk or not. Like, put hugs, his fist through the 15 thing. Yeah. 
with Big friends. friends. Oh my god. I mean, the only thing that I ever had happy. bad to say about friends. Hilaire was the fact that uh, it was just he, he he can't make the same runs that Antonio does. Not necessarily yeah. with the ball, but he can't make the same run to get to the ball. And that was my only like thing. I think, I think him. thankfully with Ajax, he's got so many creative players with Tadic and Anthony and Neres yeah. and Berghaus also, around him play, that at they're least they're providing against, They're also playing against like, Dutch clubs. Like, no, well, even even in the Champions League. League they're they're Champions all high. League, high. His Champions League debut, debut is due to score like four goals. Who, who were they playing? Sporting? Was it Sporting they were playing? Was that against uh, Sporting? Probably. Sporting? But I mean, I don't think you're going up against well. He scored in the second Champions League game and all. He scored in both games in the Champions League for them, but yeah, I said that's a, that's something for another day. I can't not not after Vlasic. I can't talk about it now because I'll yeah, just get wound up. Fair. Well, he's not coming, he's not coming back. Okay, so well, so Hale is the know, same as Vlasic. So what, what are your expectations? <laughs> what are your expectations for for Gank? I mean, surely, like I I don't remember to be overconfident with us with us, Sam, but surely we're expecting a result, right? I mean, we're reasonably expecting a result against these guys. Well, I'll tell you, they're gonna they're gonna have a fun. They're gonna have a player who he was linked with. Uh, funny Six enough, but eight lump. Yeah, a striker Paul Onyechu, I think his name is. Onyechu, Onyechu, yeah. something like that. Um, oh, that good guy. Player. Yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah, we're, we're right. gonna, so we're gonna need. If yeah. I'll I tell think... you what, if you, if you've never seen him play, go watch his hat trick the other day. The geezer's got two left feet. He's a bag of shit, and he's six foot eight. That's all he is. He is horrible. He's Peter Crouch. He just <laughs> honestly watch his hat trick. He's the I worst say, hat trick I have ever <laughs> seen in my life. He is woeful, but, you know, but he will be a handful. A I mean, he yeah. will be a handful. Yeah. No, seriously, Lee, go and watch it. I beg you, it is awful. But okay. it will okay, be... I, will. I, will. I, will. I reckon he, Dawson, for me, should... I, I'm opting for Dawson just because I think that he, he would be maybe mountain. too much for Diop to handle, whereas Dawson's a bit of a just... Well, who are you thinking? Ruthless who are you thinking uh, Dawson no comes in back someone. Are you thinking well, Dawson, and, Dawson and, and who? Well, Zuma. Well, basically... Yeah, I think Zuma and all, funny enough. Um, I thought Zuma was go- fantastic today, by the way. I thought he was excellent. Yeah. I think he was great, mate. I think he's he class. And Bo- Listen, he and Albana both got a lot of stick for their performances recently. He got a lot and of they, were both, they were both superb. They got a lot of stick. They were both mm. superb today, I thought. <laughs> both of them excellent. And um, one of the things I love about this team is that we are able to have players bounce back from bad performances yeah. and come back and play well in the next match. I think it feels great to have four good I don't think Zuma got stick, though. It Lynch. certainly does. I, 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 I saw on social media, ta- uh, James, you know, people on Twitter are crazy anyway. There was some criticism of Zuma. I will hold on my hands. I, I criticized the bono the other week. I thought he was horrendous. Well, but he was. He, he, was he was. No, he was horrendous. But he came back and he played well today. He got the goal. Yeah. But yeah. also he and Zuma uh, together as a central defense pairing, absolutely mm. fantastic. I thought they were brilliant. So and the numbers put, bear that out, I think. So let's put it this way then. So if we start off in goal and work our way through the 11, right, obviously Ariola, we would all agree. Sure, will be the will be the goalkeeper on Thursday. Yep. So obviously the left back. We've only got are one you left playing back in the same formation? Or are you playing a different one? I got a feeling. I don't know why. I got a feeling he might go three four three. Okay. He might go. He might go. Cresswell, Cresswell, uh, <laughs> Diop, and Dawson. They have Mazawaku as like a wing back. I don't know yeah. why. I just got a funny feeling because I don't think we've got the personnel. Is Arthur available again? Arthur's available now. Yeah. Okay. Do you start any of the academy? Like, well, let me rephrase. Is there anyone Ashby in the academy or... that you would want to start? Ashby was on the bench today. Well, so was Baptiste. Mm-hmm. So Ashby Baptiste. had a very good game the other day. He was very, very good for the under-21. Yeah. Baptiste He's right back, though, isn't he? Well. Yeah. Uh, I think right back, back center back. He can't yeah. plays both. What is it with this club? We, we can't find a left back. No, no, breed one. And, no, uh... we can't find a left I know we can't find well, we a left back. I don't want to know. He can't see I, the I, I, tell you, I got a kid. I got a kid on my son's uh, team who is uh, left-footed and is a good defender, and I'm thinking maybe I should just send him over to uh, Chad uh, to, you know, get him signed up. He's like eight, just a little bit eight years old, but, but he's yeah. good. He's good. He's, maybe he's nine years old. He's a fourth grader. He's nine years old. He's good. You, what do you think then? So you, if we go right back, left back, and center halves, I think left back sort of picks itself, doesn't it? Let's be honest. Well, it has to, right? I mean, I it, think I think he gives Cresswell a rest. I think he goes, oh, David. Oh, David. David's, oh, trying get, David, get... David's trying to make. I know. Listen, I said he would be player of the year, David. For three hours tonight, that's that's what David he was doing. great, mate. Dawson, I think, I think, I, I think I he'll think go. Johnson gets a run out. I think, yeah, I think he goes. Ben Johnson starting, give Sue Fowler another week's rest, or at least until yeah. the weekend. Johnson, Absolutely. 
I would go with Dawson just because I think he would know how to handle a bigger striker like that. I think he would cause a few more problems. I think Diop would be a bit nervous in the challenge area. He's not, maybe not as good as Dawson. Yeah. He just puts his head to everything he can. I go with Zuma back there. And then I'd probably give Masuaka a run out. If Masuaku can't do against Genk, then God help us, you know. So, um, so you're and then Arthur, Arthur, really you're putting Arthur at left back, Tom. Yeah, just because it's Genk, they lost to uh, Dynamo or whatever last week. You know, yeah. it's if surely they can't cause that much of an issue that Masuaka will have to. We will have a lot of the ball. For God's sake, for the few defensive plays that he will be needed for, it can't be that difficult. So you know Masuaku will be up for it too. Yeah, cool. I think yeah. he's great. You want to start crying, mate? If you think Masuaku is going to defend, don't. <laughs> I've already got nightmares of people turning him inside out. But I just think against Geng, just give Cresswell a rest. It yeah. shouldn't be that difficult for him. He's, you know, if he can't come through against Geng and do that, then. Jesus Christ, there's just no hope for the poor fella. So basically, but... then, so basically, that's your four defensive players. Who's your two DMs? No, nah, I'd go I'd go Rice as the DM. I'd go Lanzini as a box-to-box centre mid. And then I'd play Vlasic through the middle. I'd give Ben Rama a rest. I'd play four nows on the left, Bowen on the right, and Antonio through the middle is what I would go so, with. Even though you got Tottenham on Sunday? See, I don't right. know if I'd play Antonio. I don't, I don't know if I'd play Antonio, honestly. I think anyway. he might give Bowen a shot up front because I, I don't I know. Think he, I, I think he'll give 60 minutes to Antonio and then I reckon I reckon that um, I reckon that he may bring Yarmolenko on for him or something I like think that. Yarmolenko plays in the start myself. That I wouldn't surprise I, me. I, to be honest with you, I, I think he'd do all right in Europe. I've said it so many times. Just get the geezer a pair of yellow boots and he'll score every week. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. I think, I yes. think be yes. His pace is, is fine for Europa League. I mean, he, yeah, he, he, he suits the, the style more players. in Europe, I think. But he would he, he does well in those internationals because they're much slower paced. And you and again, I've said it many times before, you saw him play for Ukraine in the Euros and do well until he played England and they got crushed. And that was because, in part, they couldn't keep up with the pace of England. They couldn't. I know he, he can afford either. it, but can we start some sort of like GoFundMe or something? Get him some yellow boots. <laughs> No, you can I mean, get him. He was laughing today when he came on because he knows he's about to get yellow boots. He was he was laughing today when he came on because he knew he was about to collect 120 grand a week. Just that dude's on. If we can't get him a yellow kit, we need to get him yellow boots. Yeah. All right. So Gen- Genk's form uh, is Awful. you know sort of mixed, uh, and this Antwerp club I think is actually pretty good. They love a match uh, with a red card, don't they? They certainly do. <laughs> Jesus, they didn't, they didn't quite get past Union. I love Genk and Ghent. I know, I know. I, I got confused by that earlier. This, oh this I couldn't even watch this game. I wouldn't even know. What Sorry, was going can on. I just appreciate? Can I just appreciate the Belgian Cup against Winklesport? Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Wait, wait. Uh, Wink, Winkle is the word Belgian word for the Dutch word. Winkle. Winkle is the Dutch word. For I love, sport. I love a bit of, uh, I love a bit of Winklesport. It means it means <laughs> store in Dutch. The the, the Winkel. Narda Winkeldus. They would say there's an ad where they would say, "Let's go to the store." Narda Winkeldus. Uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> So they lost to Antwerp. They've lost to. They've beaten somebody named. Sirs. I don't know what that is. Serene. But Zagreb beat them three nil in Genk, and uh, you know they Cass lost Yupin. to somebody named Yupin. Yupin. <laughs> Yupin. And Chalarwa. Uh, so oh, I was like, just about to say, were you going to give us a little a roll of the R's with the Chalarwa? Chalarwa. 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 They lost to Chalarwa. Uh, and so they're not in great form, and this this is a really revealing result to be right here. I mean, obviously there's no real transitive uh, victories, but I can mean, you just click on their players? Do they actually have anybody of note that we may know that has once played in the Premier League? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Let's see if I can. Um, um, ah, Ugbo, Chelsea. Yeah, Martin there's van der your man Onuachu. Um, Martin van der Voort. If anybody Shout plays out Mark manager, McKenzie. If anybody plays football manager, Martin van der Voort is supposed to be one of the best goalkeepers in the world in a few years. Well, hopefully not right now. Joseph uh, Panzo, any relation to Jonathan? Oh, I don't know. That's a good question. Love for Mark McKenzie, please. Is that Joseph, is he USMT? MNT? He's got to be. Yeah. Related. Nah, how the name's spelled wrong. It's not Pantsil, it's Paintsil. I thought that's how... I thought nah, that's it's how... Pantsil. Oh, it's for Pantsil? Us. Okay. Okay, I thought that was how he spelled it. Uh, and then that big fucking number one, 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 one,
What's that? Look at this guy. Chambere. That looks like Charlie Boy's mugshot, potentially. Oi, careful. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. Charlie Boy's a better looking guy than that. He's a better looking guy than that. I think uh, regardless of who they have, it's still a team that we should do pretty well against. Um, mm. I mean, you know, it could be a ugly, like, 1-0, you know, because they're going to try to play us in the counter, and we're just going to hold the ball the whole in. time. One more they're win sitting, and we're they're in. They're sitting, sixth in, they're sitting sixth in Belgium. Uh, this Antwerp club that they lost to is pretty good. And look at Eupen. Look Eupen at up there. Anderlecht. Eupen doing real well. What happened to Anderlecht? They used to be like the Belgian. Yeah, Josh uh, Cullen went there and then they just fell off the face of the earth. Look at this. Victor Cunt, he's in charge, isn't he? Yeah. The young, uh, Charlois, major. Yeah. And they've played, what, three more games than we have? Standard mm-hmm. Liege down, not doing so well either. That's another big uh, Belgian. Yeah. Club Listen, club. I'm going to head off because I've got to go edit some videos and stuff, but it's been lovely yeah, as course. always. Yeah. Tom, thank you so much. For, yeah, we're going to spend about uh, 10 more minutes and uh, we're going to go to... Hey, Tom, before you go, before you go. Lee, quick, you didn't have to flirt with me before you left and pull your camera down. <laughs> I can't see my screen unless I do that. I have like three screens. <laughs> my laptop screen is in the way of my other two and I can't I can't see them. Anyway, uh, I'm always doing that. That's why I'm always doing that. Who? Okay, give us your give us your score predictions for Thursday and Sunday, just off the top of your head. Uh, I reckon 2-0 Thursday. I'm going to say... Antonio and Vlasic to score the goals. Okay. Just to be a... <laughs> well, I'm a... From your, from your oh, no, look, actually, you need sleep, Tom. Yeah, listen, I reckon he gets on the score sheet on Thursday. Um, and then if he doesn't, then I will not show my face on Sunday night again. Um, right. But I expected that. Yeah. For for Spurs, I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna say a cheeky two one win. I to be honest with you, I don't fear Spurs at all. They're just. Defensively, I they are woeful. I don't either. No, so. they, they look woeful today. That Newcastle team, which will eventually be the biggest team in the world, uh, right now it looks like one that's uh, ready to go What's down. What's the current they, best, biggest team in the world, Lee, that team in France? Uh, they're not the biggest team in the world. Come on. West Ham is the biggest team in the world, Tom. I don't Damn know. I don't know, what you, <laughs> I I don't know what you've been watching, but we're the, we're massive. We're the biggest team in the world. But no, I just I Spurs, they're just, I think defensively they're there to be got. Yes, they'll offer some attacking threat and oh, I um, hope Eric Dyer team. plays Fresh is, is good um, I'll but, tell you uh, what yeah. if Lashley scores mate I know Tom's going to be like on the but old Twitter we, but, okay. I'm <laughs> literally <laughs> I'm putting a bet on Flashes to score first and bag a fucking hat trick Tom, I'm just going to DM it every day to James just to be Tom, really. Tom's got to go we'll let, we'll let Tom go because I know he's got to go and it's also do you know yeah, what I will right, do though if, if yeah. Flashes don't get on the pitch well, uh, oh, I screenshot and say, Tom, we ain't even got on the pitch. I'm like, mate, what's going on? <laughs> Tom, Tom, you should be using the block feature on Twitter. That's <laughs> it, mate. Say how do you remit for me? You guys don't stay up uh, too late watching, uh, you know, whatever blokes watching. My the roommate's online, looking okay? at me and it, it is waving back. Okay, fine. Uh, <laughs> so, but thank you for coming on. It's always good to have yeah. you on. And hopefully you, you guys. All right. All right. Take it easy, fellas. Take thank you, Tom. On the... Uh, all right, I promised we'd go an hour, and it's almost two hours yeah. now, but that's pretty typical. Uh, if you guys have five more minutes, can we win at home against Spurs? The home if form Eric Dyer wins, yeah. yeah. The home form is poor, though. It's very, and I don't know why, and I don't think there's any reason for it. I, I'm not sure. Well, I mean, I don't think it's, I don't think it's poor. We played really well against Manchester United for the whole match, and then the second half of Brentford, we played really well too. We just didn't get the results. Um, that's true. Yeah, so, I don't necessarily really, think that performances were not bad. The result was bad. Yeah. yeah, and that's just because we're not we can't find the the finish in the attacking third right now. I think that's the yeah. biggest issue. But um mm. yeah, I mean we could beat them. I mean the, the atmosphere is gonna be incredible. You know, obviously cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's a big game. Yeah, yeah, it's a big it's, game. It's, I think it'll say a lot game. about us. Um I think as it stands, you know, I think our squad is better. At least maybe the starting eleven is better um, from top down. But I think you know Sue Fowles had Henry Kane in his pocket in the past. I believe he will play on Sunday. Um, I think you just got to slow one of those two down, you know, and hopefully you get a result from it. But I think we'll get our chances. We have to just complete it. You know, um, okay. what happens midweek? I think will give us a lot of confidence. Even if we lose, I think they'll want to. You know, get that monkey off the back. And no better team to do it against than Spurs. You know, so yeah. and you know, you, you probably want to get a result against Spurs with City right behind that. So, 
We have to. Mm-hmm. I think. I think we. I think we have. To. I thought. By the way, I thought today's result was fantastic. Ed, Everton are in form. They were ahead of us in the table. We went into Goodison. I read today, uh, James. Um, I'm going to try to remember this. The first time West Ham have won two consecutive matches at Goodison Park in something like 85 years. Yeah, a crazy, it's a place, crazy number. Some. It's a know, place, Lee, where we just don't win, mate. Yes, I will yeah, say exactly. that. You never, just, I, I, I can't. I, I'll never find this again. But it was, I mean, mm. decades. Let's say. So last yeah. season and this season, the first time we've won two consecutive at Goodison in any of our lifetimes, basically. I think Whatever. since 2016, or the Pirates, uh, the final season at Bolin, that was one of the first times we'd won there for a long time. Like, yeah. And that's yes. going back six years ago. We've yes. nicked some little wins there, right? But the last time we actually played them with fans in the ground, I'll never forget the game because I was playing a pool match at the time. We lost 4-0 and we got absolutely obliterated up, up there. Um yep. Yep. And they they done a demolition job on us, and yep. I thought Evan were poor, mate. If I'm honest, if I'm being truthfully honest, and I thought we was yeah. we was good, I did we was too. good, I but we we got the job done. Much. Well, they had we were good, and we we were defensively solid, defensively very yeah. solid. I thought going forward, Fornals and Ben Rama made some poor choices to shoot when they should have kept the ball moving forward or or, or moved the ball to a teammate. I also thought um, our finishing was was subpar, uh, but mm. defensively we made up for a lot of that. Because we, yeah. we, we just, big, you know, Agana and, and, and Azuma were excellent. It's a big game so against Spurs. Uh, always is. It's, a, it's, it's always a big game. We know that. They're the biggest rival we have outside of Millwall. We don't ever play Millwall. So it's mm. a huge it's a huge game. Hey, Peach. It's good to see you, my friend. Watch Peach's. You, have, you guys go find Peach's channel, West Ham Random, and check him out, okay? He does a lot of good stuff. Uh, James has a channel, too. He's on E20 Zone TV. You got to watch that, too. You go subscribe. I know. To I'll, he I'll, does a, I'll he does a great job. He does a great job. Hey, James, did you hear? Did you hear? Friday at 5.30, your time, Bill Gardner on American Hammers TV. Uh, brilliant, mate. Yeah. Brilliant. I mean, I, that's a, it's on the schedule anyway. So, I, so I've, I've scheduled it with the, author, the co-author of his book. So I'm very excited mm. about it. And I'm going to see what he thinks about a bunch of Yanks supporting his uh, beloved club he's supported now for 50 years or more. Anyway, um, Going back to yeah, Spurs obviously it's huge. They're in the table. It's huge. They're a point ahead of us. You know, mm. this is a, this is a, uh, a statement match. Absolutely, Lucas. That's what I was going to say. This sets the tone. Even though they're not the, the best, the even though they're not their best form, they still have some good players. It's a der- it's a derby. Mm. It's a statement match. Let's put it this way: If Flesic was to come on. Against Spurs and score the winner, he'd be a hero, and everyone's eyes like Lanzini was last year. Yeah. So okay. it's one of them ones. Um, it's a big game. I don't want to lose this game. Like, I can't Nobody stand does. Spurs. Nobody like, does. I hate Spurs with passion. Yep. And for me, I think this is this game is more important than the Genk one. If I'm honest. Now, oh, I, I if it was, no question about yeah, it. Yeah, I just, I just, I don't know why, Lee. I'd just rather go out with a semi or a small squad against Genk. I agree. And to see, play the ninety minutes, see what happens. I feel good if about we... our place in the group. I do. I feel good about. I'm not trying to be overconfident, but I feel yeah. good about our place in the group. I and I'm saying Zagreb have to come to us. Zagreb have to come to us. I think Rapid Vienna are not all that great, and 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 even if we draw this match, we're still top of the group. I, I just, I'm not that worried. About it it is it is a tricky situation just because it's one of those, like if we just win it, we're through. Final sixteen. Yeah. Even with a are draw, we, are we? Are we? Is that is that a sure thing? Yeah, but even if we I'm even if we math. draw the game, even if we draw game seven points from three games, we have got uh, two away games, one a home game. Yeah, I think has to get at least of, four points. I feel really good about. Where we're yeah, going. I'm always I'm always in the camp of yeah. just win it. Don't worry about it. I I agree. Oh, with yeah. that, but 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 I but I am with James in saying a draw what, would be good though. Let's not mm. sacrifice anybody on Thursday. We should be playing on Sunday. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I agree. Save, we, save the big boys. Save the weapons. Gigantic for at this point. Massive. Yeah. For every reason you could think of. You yeah, know. I agree. Uh, um, so, go ahead. Sorry. I really don't know. Before you sort of round it up to the end, Lee, I must admit, I appreciate you saying about my channel. Um, I'm trying my oh, best. Yeah, you do a great job. You I'm, do a fantastic I'm, job. Yeah. I'm doing uh, what I can. Do you know what I mean? Like normal hours. But, um, Every no, morning listen, I wake up. 
<laughs> First thing I watch. Listen, when, right. I, when I'm t- when I when I'm able Genuinely. to watch your show live, I do. Uh, I mm. with work, it's hard to say when when I'm going to be on and off, but uh, yeah. but I like to watch it when I can. So yeah, and I, yeah, I, I do I appreciate it, mate. It goes a yeah. long way. It helps me out. Um, but now, listen, as I say about West Ham on against Spurs, um, I think this game will be a like a statement of intent for us. Like right, this, yeah. what the only decent thing about the whole thing is Spurs have got to go away to Holland on the Thursday and play the same time and we're at home on the Thursday. Yeah, and that big conference league game they got there where they'll play their under 12s or whatever, but still, they got to go. Yeah. No, yeah, they do, they a... do, they do. It's true. It's true. So, I mean, you still yeah. got to travel there, you still got to yep. get back there, it's going to be late. And, um, yeah, it's a big game, mate, and I I think we are, I agree with Tom. I think 2-1 looks on the cards. Uh, I think Antonio will score in that game. I really do. He loves to score against Spurs. Um, He's got to get and, back in form. He's got to get back in form. And, I, and I'll, I'll be honest, mate. Ben Rama's got to step up and all. all he right, does. Listen, I agree. Yeah. And, so how and, much and, I and, like Ben Rama. <laughs> he's, got to, he's got to start stepping up a bit. Ch- if, Everyone yeah, besides if, if Bowen, in my opinion. He does too. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I'm with you, Lucas. Uh, and I'm, I'm worried about our home form, and I, maybe it's just coincidence. It's certainly made a good point in that the two games we lost should have been a draw against Manchester United. Uh, Extra time goal. We come back. We win the penalty. Noble misses it, unfortunately. Brentford. Yeah, but both poor, poor times defending Lee. right at the end. But the Lee, both. Palace we drew. Brentford we lost. Mm. I mean, the home form is bad. But, it's just not. Good. But both of them games that we've lost have been off the back of Europe. Yeah, I know. I noticed yes. that too. And, and, yeah, and it's so. so funny how we've talked so many times on here about how oh we're gonna play Spurs, Manchester United, Chelsea, whatever on Sunday. They have to play on Wednesday, yeah. Thursday, and they come in and they steamroll us after playing in Europe. We have not mm. done that so far. Our, our, no. we, have, we have looked tired. We have looked worn no. out, and that's a problem. I agree with you. Well, I think so, a lot of that, too, is you know we do keep a lot of the same play. Like changing three players in the squad is not really changing too much. You know, I guess it just depends on what players you have. But, you know, I think um, – I think Antonio plays. I think Rice is in there. I, I if, if we're talking substitutions, uh, Ariola's starting. Yes. I think uh, Vlasic is going to start for, I don't know, maybe maybe Ben Rama or maybe Bowen, but probably yeah. more so just Ben Rama, not for a skill or anything like that, just because I think Ben Rama is somebody you want to save for Sunday. Um, I the thing is, also, I what agree. everyone keeps forgetting is that in Europe, it's five subs. That's five true. Yeah. That's true. You can, and, see, you can and see what it is. Your outfield players. Yep. I'm just wondering whether Moise is going to go right, go out, get 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 the goals early, and shut the game down, like professionally. Yeah. Like I don't even notice, but both I games. I would love have won. that. I would yeah. love that, like we did against Zagreb, basically against Dinamo Zagreb. Yeah, yeah. That's and that's how we, I, yeah. I think that's how we've got to do it, Lee, because we haven't got the squad depth at the minute. You know? I yeah. agree. I'd like yeah. to say. I'd like to just bang a couple in in the first half an hour and then just see it off. So I guess with that being said, James, and, and you bring up a good point because I completely forgot that it was five subs. One, let's just pretend that Moyes is going to use them and use them properly. Let's say we do go into halftime 2-0 up. Do you potentially bring Baptiste with you, uh, Ashby with you? Um I don't know, okay, flex. Else, just to kind of play 45 minutes to so that you know for a fact somebody in your the bench. squad doesn't. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he yeah. Does get I, I think you bring him on the trip. Yes, I do. I think what you do, five, I think seven, really yep. you can sort of make your own mind up with that. Um, yeah. If Cresswell was to play 60 minutes and then get sub for, uh, for mass, then that's not a problem really. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, if Noble can get back fitness, then he will play at some point. Yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, no Crow. So you got you, you got Yarmolenko in there, um, yeah. and I think giving Bowen Ben Rama four nails fifteen minutes isn't an issue. Like, do you know what I mean? Fifteen minutes in a game, just to see it out. He probably tell him, you know, right, or give him seventy minutes and then get the other players on. Yeah. So yeah. it's going to be it's going to be interesting. But I think what Moyes is doing well is I don't know if you noticed, but he's coming out strong, trying to get the game won and then seeing yeah. it out. And oh, to yeah. me, yeah. to me, that's how it should be. So, how, and, and, and yeah. it's worked so far, and that it is how it should be. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. I, I don't think there's right. any reason that we can't do that against uh, Gank on Thursday. Um, I think 
kind of even to expand on the substitution point, I think if you see somebody, regardless of who it is, uh, not up to snuff in the first half, take them out of halftime. You got five subs, use no more than two of them if you need to at halftime. You know, mm. but that, that's just if somebody's not up to snuff or if we have. Well, basically, you got to look at it like this. You got you got Yarmolenko uh, will play probably. Lanzini will probably play. Yeah. Flassage will probably play. So that's three in straight away. You've got yeah. the two centre halves that will probably be changed. That's that's five right. players in. Your goalkeeper's gonna be changed. That's your six players in. The only the only player that I do fear is Declan Rice. Do you think he starts with six changes? I can see six changes, mate. Yeah. I can see uh Flassage in. Yeah. I can, yeah. I can the ones I've just named, I can see yeah. coming in straight away. The one that I do fear is Declan Rice, mate. If I'm honest, yeah. I don't want to see Declan Rice keep playing every single game because he only takes one injury and he's yeah. then with just lost one against Brentford, he was for sure gassed. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I feel on that, mate. I really do. I think yeah, try and win it in the first. Did somebody 16. mention? Did you guys mention Jared Bowen? I don't know. I don't remember. But uh, anyway, there's uh, Jared Bowen's the... girlfriend again. Uh, there she is. There's Danny. Let's hope he can start scoring. On the pitch, you know. All right, yeah, I was going to see scoring. All right, it's just not scored where we needed to score. But uh, um, all right, so uh, so give me uh, if you guys would give me your predictions for Thursday and 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 Sunday, uh, Lucas. What do you think? Uh, Thursday, I really really hope that Alex Kraus somehow gets two negative tests because we're really going to need him. Like James said, I really don't want to see Declan Rice keep playing every single game. I don't either. Yeah. Um, Although he might want to play, but I, you know, yeah. If we are, we are probably going to make some changes because Sunday is big. Um, you know, I'm going to go for a one-one draw on Thursday, just because I can see a bunch of changes, and it really depends on if certain players play. Like if Antonio doesn't play, I can't see us ba- bagging two or three goals. So I'm going to go one-one on okay. Thursday, and then. If we rest everybody and have the weapons on Sunday, I'm gonna be modest. I'm gonna go go two two one. Two one to West Ham? Yeah. Especially three one if Eric Dyer plays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because he is incredibly shit. Well, let's hope he plays. Uh all right, James. Uh, actually, you know what? Uh, let's do Sally next. Sally, I look at him like Alex Awobi. I think Alex Awobi is so shit, and I look at Eric Dyer the same. <laughs> Just saying. Um, Thursday, I'll say 1-0, regardless of who starts and subs in for us. I think just 1-0. It just feels that way. Um, and then Sunday, I think, you know, hopefully Sufal is able to come back. No one gets injured. You know, you're probably going to have your traditional starting 11 against them. Um, yeah. I don't so know I see, fresh, but I hopefully soon. Yeah. I can see something to the effect of maybe Spurs scoring first. Um but we come back and we beat them. Uh I don't know. I feel like a lot of goals are in for Sunday. I think maybe three two. Who's gonna win? Who's gonna win? For us. Three for two us? for us. Because we got yeah, it very seems very possible, yeah. It would be nice to, for the home fans to walk away with the with the win. But I mean we're in good form. So we're in good form. Away form, yeah. Our home form is, but all right, James. What do you think? Um, I agree with Sally on the Thursday night. I think one nil. Um, I really do. I don't think we concede. I think we've got defensively we're strong. With Ariola in goal, he hasn't yeah. conceded a goal yet. So, um, yeah, yeah I think one nil. I think it'd be score a goal, see it out, professional job done. Um. Sunday's an hour one, mate, if I'm honest, because yeah, yeah. this is me a game too. I just can't. Me too. Yep. Every year when West Ham play, that's this, this is the first fixture I look at when we've got them home, when we've got them away. Right. And I look at this game and I think this is a statement of intent on Sunday. If we if we beat them at home, then we're buzzing. Then we've got yep. Villa coming up, we've got the cup yep. game in between, yep. and then we've got Liverpool. Yep. Um, I'm going to say 2 1 to us, and I think Antonio scores. Um, it's a big game for a few people. Bowen, Ben Rama, and uh, Zuma. I think if all three of them play, which they should do, yeah. then they play well, we win the game. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll say 2-1 against Spurs, mate. Well, I'll tell you, um, 
you know, I never pick West Ham to win, but I'm going to be honest with you. In Europa League, I'm breaking the rule. I, I do think we win on Thursday. Um, I, I, I see what Lucas is saying. I really do. I'm with you, though, James. I actually think we win 2-0, and, and only because that seems to be our scoreline in Europa League. I think we score early and we score late. Um, I, if, if, if Listen, if we lose, obviously it's my fault. Blame me. Okay, go ahead and do that. That's fine. Um, but uh, Tottenham, I... It's weird. If we were walking into White Hart Lane or whatever they call that place now, the new place. It's Tottenham Stadium. Tottenham Stadium. I would be confident that we could win that game. I, mm. Our home form really scares me. And so I'm going to conservative, be conservative and say it's going to be like a 2-2 draw. And nervy, nervy. You know what I mean? I do think there'll yeah. be goals. I, I, I don't think we can shut them down completely. Um, I, I think it's 2-2. And I think there, somebody scores in injury time. I don't know who it is, but you know mm. what I mean? But it comes down to. That's what makes it a draw is the injury time goal. Somebody loses three points in injury time. I don't know who. I threw them. Mm. I can't decide. But anyway, I'm always wrong about this. Anyway. It doesn't really matter. Um, all right. Well, listen uh, to Zach, who was with us and always leaves an indelible mark on the show. Uh, to, uh, to Tom, uh, who was with us, uh, mainly to argue with James. Uh, and to everybody in the chat room. Uh, and and Lucas, who's with me pretty much every week now, James, who's with me pretty much every week now, and Sally, my buddy, my friend, I haven't seen in such a long time. Uh, for so long, we've done this together, and it was so good to have you back. It's really great to have you back. Uh, and everybody in the chat room, uh, <laughs> I don't know what Lawrence is talking about. Uh, this hat looks, unless he's uh, making a joke about the Steelers, hat looks uh, pretty good. Unfortunately. Oh, oh, is he a Baltimore guy? Yes. Oh, oh gotcha. Well, that makes sense. All right. Um, all right. Gotcha. I'm, I'm, I'm not really, I'm not, I'm not, I have no dog in that hunt. To everybody in the chat room who was here, uh, thanks everybody. And uh, we're going to try to do this again next Sunday. Okay. I think, you know, we're going to try to do good next week. See how it goes. Uh, in the meantime, two big, big games coming up this week. Let's hope we win them both. Come on, you irons. <laughs>